Sports proudly presents Game 2 in our exclusive coverage of the Bowl Championship Series. 20 years ago, the Georgia Bulldogs, led by legendary coach Vince Dooley and eventual Heisman Trophy winner Herschel Walker, made a return to the Sugar Bowl. They came with a number one ranking and as defending national champions. That same year, Bobby Bowden led his Florida State Seminoles to a Gator Bowl win. And on that rainy night, began a record streak of consecutive bowl appearances that continues this evening. Across the field tonight, facing his longtime mentor is Georgia head coach Mark Richt. A Bobby Bowden disciple, he leads Georgia to its first Sugar Bowl appearance in two decades. The offense is led by a terrific trio. Quarterback David Green, tailback Musa Smith, and wide receiver Terrence Edwards. The duo of Boss Bailey and David Pollock are the leaders of a dog defense that punished SEC offenses on a weekly basis. For the Florida State Seminoles, it's been a season of ups and downs. The kick on the way. He missed it. Tonight, Florida State comes to the Louisiana Superdome without some of their usual weapons, but they still have an explosive offense led by wide receiver Anquan Bolden and are ready with a full bag of tricks. Tonight, it's the champions of the SEC, the Georgia Bulldogs, against the champions of the ACC, the Florida State Seminoles, in the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl. Outside the Louisiana Superdome, it's been a long wait for the Dogs and the Knolls to play for their fans for a variety of reasons. It's been a long day. But the Seminole and Georgia faithful have turned the French Quarter into their personal paradise. And Georgia, the number three team in the country, is the home team. You can tell by the red and black in this building, it looks like Athens West three years ago. Both head coaches were on opposite, on the same sideline. Tonight, they're on opposite sidelines. Down on the field, third man in our team, Lynn Swan, with our two head coaches tonight. I'm with the two head coaches for tonight's ball game, Bobby Bowden here at Florida State and Mark Rick at Georgia. And Coach Bobby Bowden, I'm going to start with you. Are you surprised that you're playing against Mark so quick in the BCS ball game? He, it took me 40 dadgum years. He does it in two. Can you believe it? I can believe it. <laughs> you help coach this young man. Now, I know you're happy, Mark, the fact that you've got Georgia back in the championship football. Right. But tell me emotionally how it feels to have to face your mentor, Bobby Bowden, in this ballgame. Well, it's a little awkward. I used to wear the garnet gold, you know, so uh, during pregame, it'll be a little awkward. I'm sure at the end of the game, when we shake hands, it'll feel kind of funny, but uh, I, I just enjoyed being around Coach Bowden. Now, you guys know each other so well. Is there one thing you can share with us right now that you think the other person is thinking about in this ballgame? He's thinking about that out route. I, I've watched him all year, and I can just about predict when he's going to throw the out, you know, when he needs a first down, you know. Uh, and so, he, had, you know, Mickey had been going at it for 15 years, you know. They will know a lot about each other. What do you think Bobby's got going through his head? I don't know, but it looks like we better run the out and up. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, guys, I know this is going to be an exciting ball game for both of you, and you're glad you're playing against each other because... What you both have shown each other through the course of your careers is the ultimate amount of respect. Congratulations to both of you being here. Let's go back upstairs to Brad Ness. So tonight, it's the old man and the young gun. And the old man means something more to one of our guys at Times Square Stadium. As we say Happy New Year to John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Happy New Year's, guys. And a happy new year to you as well. And you saw your dad and Mark Rick there. Now, here's interesting statistics. Two years since Mark Rick had left the Florida State program, Florida State's lost nine games. He's only lost five at 20 and five. Does he have any advantage with the knowledge he comes into this game? Well, he does. He really knows a lot about what Florida State's doing. He knows their defense. He's practiced against them over and over again. He didn't just learn offense from Florida State. He's learned defense because he's got one of the best defenses in the country. And that's what made him the great team he is right now. Florida State may have four losses. Losses, right. but they're better team. I forget about the quarterback <laughs> situation. This should be a great matchup. The Rose Bowl game presented by PlayStation 2 just ended moments ago. In Oklahoma, Nate Hibble was the MVP of the game. Goes to Antoine Savage here, 7-0. But Quentin Griffin could have been MVP just as well easily. Oh, sure. He kept running the ball so well. He was able to keep the, the offense balanced, keep the, the defense off of Nate Hibble. His running got them in the end zone. On the other hand, Washington State only had four yards rushing for the evening. Griffin, 30 carries, 
144 yards, goes over 100 again, 34-14. The final, you see the numbers on Hibble. The Capital One Bowl, Penn State against Auburn. Last time these two teams hooked up, in fact, the only time, my partner Terry Bowden was the head coach of Auburn, and uh, they didn't win that timeout, though. Ronnie Brown running nicely here, goes in for the touchdown. Two-point conversion was no good. Zach Mills trying to bring him back, but too much D here. Sure was. They were able to stop Larry, Larry Johnson, held him under 100 yards, and they don't win when he doesn't get 100 yards. Ronnie Brown, though, 184 yards. That's what Auburn wants to do. That's what I couldn't do when I lost to Penn State. Couldn't run the football. Notre Dame against NC State. Phillip Rivers, there's a little <laughs> misdirection here between the legs on this handoff. Chuck Amata, another Bobby Bowden boy. We got the trick plays that Florida State may need to run tonight. McClendon got that touchdown. Phillip Rivers, nine yards to Jericho Cotchery. Rivers, 23-37, 228 yards and a couple of touchdowns. NC State wins. The Cotton Bowl, Texas against LSU, and Chris Sims has not liked playing in the Cotton Bowl, but Roy Williams here goes 39 yards on this end around. The long legs getting into the end zone. Well, that's why he's so fast. Such a great receiver and a runner when he has the ball, but Chris Sims getting his first win in Dallas, and this was a very good LSU defensive secondary that he beat. Yeah, Sims goes eight yards here to Ivan Williams. 15 of 28, 269 yards and two touchdowns. Texas with the win. The outback, Michigan against Florida. It was all Chris Perry, four touchdown runs. Well, when they run the ball well like this, they're going to win the football games. And John Navarro had a great game at quarterback. But we talked about coaches leaving. John Thompson, defensive coordinator, was not going to was leaving for another job after the season. His defense was not able to stop Michigan all day. Perry, 193 total yards and four touchdowns. But Georgia and Florida State promises to be a great matchup. Coming up in the no kiss sugar bowl we'll get you back out to orleans in a moment this has been the built ford tough mid-game report brought to you by ford f-series with the all-new power stroke diesel despite what some consider a subpar record they are the atlantic coast conference champions the seminoles of florida state It's the third-ranked Georgia Bulldogs and number 14 Florida State in the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. And it's been a long wait for the dogs, 20 years. They're finally back in New Orleans, and they are the SEC champions. Now, hi again, everybody. Brad Nestler with Bob Greasy. Welcome to New Orleans, and Happy New Year to all of you. It's been a very happy year for the Georgia Bulldogs and their fans. Long wait, Greece, 20 years to get back here. And really, you look at these two teams, and you look at their records, and they'd normally be flip-flopped. Well, don't forget Florida State. The last two years, they've lost four games. But before that, they were in the national championship game four of the next five years. Georgia hopes to have that kind of consistency. They'd like to be back here again next year for the for Sugar sure. Bowl. That'll be the national championship game. When you're 12-1, and one, you know you've got stars on both sides of the ball and Georgia does two years ago when Mark Rick went to Georgia David Green was a true freshman since that time they've gone 20 and 5 this is a big strong kid that's very intelligent that uh, really likes to throw the football great handler of the ball he is the SEC offensive player of the year on the other side on defense they've got the overall player of the year there you go David Pollock what this guy is so much fun his motor never stops he's after you he is down in the stands he's trying to get the fans in the ball game he's selling popcorn he'll do anything <laughs> he's a lot of fun to watch well for Florida State I think everybody knows their story Adrian McPherson has been removed from the team he was the starting quarterback much of the year was Chris Ricks as a starter he overslept didn't take a couple of exams and he's not here tonight Bobby Bodden thinking he you were going to have to play quarterback here a couple weeks ago well he's got Fabian Walker who was number three now, Fabian, you know, I, he's, he's got to be a little bit nervous. I'd say the butterflies are about the size of buzzards. <laughs> but he's supposed to be a cool customer. And Bobby says we're going to do what he does best. Let him sit in the pocket and throw the football. Now, if he can't get it done, he's going to go to Anquan Bolden. Anquan is probably the best athlete on the field, not the best quarterback on the field. If they have to go to him, they might be in trouble. All right, well, we're going to watch that. We're going to talk about the emotion and motivation of this game because that's a big part. And remember, Florida State's a pride, a very proud program. So are the Georgia Bulldogs. And more on that, let's go down. Third man on our team. You've seen him once. You'll see him again. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, thank you very much, Brad. You know, there are some alarming trends for the Florida State football teams in the last three years. As we take a look at this graphic, you will see that over the last three years in this new millennium, 
they have lost almost as many games as over the previous decade. 13 in the 90s, 10 already in this new millennium. But it's a team with a great deal of pride, and they believe they deserve more respect. There are seniors like Brett Williams and Alonzo Jackson that have national championship rings. What they intend to do tonight is use that as motivation in this border war to prove to everyone that this is a good football team. The same team that was a field goal away from beating Miami, who will be playing for a national championship, will go out tonight and between the white lines show you that the senior leadership in this football team has championship pride, Brad. There's no doubt about that. And Alonzo Jackson made that very clear. He said, you know, the Georgia team's done more talking, and they, he's still doing it. They're still talking. He says the fans are talking, the players are talking, they're forgetting we're Florida State. And on Georgia's side of things, they won the toss, they deferred. So Brett Kerouac will be kicking away. A senior set to kick away to Tallman Gardner and Leon Washington. Mark Richt only his second year after the long stint as offensive coordinator at Florida State and now it's the young gun against the old man the pupil against the mentor and Bobby Bowden hey. 332 wins Mark Richt's right. just getting started at 20 and 5. So Gardner and Washington deep. And we're set to go in the 69th Milky Sugar Bowl. The kick goes a yard deep to Tallman Gardner. Gardner bringing it out, cutting to the left side. Maybe got to the 20 if he was lucky. Derek Holloway ran him out of bounds. So here's the man of the hour that Bob just talked about. At least he's wearing a good number, Grease. <laughs> I like the number. <laughs> Baby and Walker, just a sophomore. First start ever. He's attempted eight passes. He's played in three games, only thrown eight passes. And you got to be a little bit nervous right now. You've got to think that Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, is going to send the house at this kid. So Florida State works from its own 19 yard line. Three wide outs, and it's Maddox, the tailback in the eye. And it's an end around. Anquan Bolden got a good block. Bolden out to the 27 yard line. We said their bag of tricks was full, and Bobby uses one on the first play of the ball game. As we take a look at the Nokia starting lineups, here's the big fellas up front Barron, Williams, Castillo, Holland, and Brett Williams, an All American. Three seniors on that offensive front. Maddox, a senior, is the tailback. Dean leads the way. Hughes, the tight end, Tallman Garter, and Anquan Bolden are the wide receivers. Anquan Bolden led the ACC in touchdown catches this year with those 12. They need to get the ball in his hands whatever way they can. They did it on an end around and now they've got second down and short about a yard to go. And it's Maddox and he's got the first down. Stretches across that 30 is Tony Gilbert the middle linebacker makes the stop. Georgia defensively we talked about David Pollock. He's not the only good one up there. Jonathan Sullivan is a Tough one to handle on the inside. Beal and Thompson round out the front four. Linebackers, Boss Bailey, he's incredible. Tony Gilbert's in the middle. Those are the top two tacklers. Chris Clemens, the other outside backer. DeCorey Bryant, Kentrell Curry, Sean Jones, and Bruce Thornton are the secondary. There's the boss. And he is something special. Now offensively, Fabian Walker got a first down. Not the easing into the ball game. He needs to complete a pass now. Here he is from the shotgun. But they'll keep it on the ground. And it's Willie Reed. Reed got about two. And it was Sullivan helping out on the stop. And he's already upset about something. And the officials down there to kind of separate folks. And already, just with that first down, Florida State, just for the time being, has taken the Georgia fans out of the ballgame. You can hear a pin drop in here right exactly. now. Exactly. And the more they stay on the field and the longer they go, the more first downs. The more they'll take him out, and the, the better Fabian Walker will feel about this. He'll say, hey, I, I took him down. As you look at the formation from above the Superdome, a second down and eight. Player coming on the field late. They didn't have enough players on the field. Now the fans start to come to life. The play clock winding down. The toss is to Maddox, and he just gets gobbled up by Sean Jones, the safety. A loss on the play. And this is a good defense. They rank 16th in the nation in overall defense and fourth 
fifth in the nation in scoring defense. Right here, Sean Jones fills the gap. The defensive end contains the play, and Jones fills up inside. And it brings up the third down and 11 now. And now you would expect we're going to see Fabian Walker put one up. There's the third down conversion. Not good for Florida State. Normally they're much better than that. Three wide receivers set from the gun. Walker, here comes the pressure. He steps up. Now he'll run with it. And he spins his way out to what looks like a first down. Great move as he was about three yards away from the first down marker. Did a little dance, and I think he got it. Well, Bobby said he was a cool customer, and it certainly looked like he was settled down there. Now it's all going to be according to the spot. You see where they put it down. You can see the marker in the upper left-hand corner. But the sticks will have to come out to have a look. And Bobby's going to the headset already. Watch this move by Walker near the end of this run. This is a pocket passer. He, they say he does not like to scramble. We watched practice the other day. I didn't see him break the pocket at all. Look the way he came down. It should be a first down, and it is. By inches. On third and 11, he got third and 11 in about four inches. Yeah, and he did it with his legs, which is still building the confidence of this young kid making his first start. So, a couple of first downs for Florida State, and they move out to the 41-yard line. Florida State not, uh, not doing too well in the passing game. 60th in the nation in passing offense. Walker. Here's the first throw. Down the middle of Bolden. Inside the 40 to the 39. Threw a strike to Bolden. Bolden made a nice adjustment, and it's a 20-yard pickup. Good call. He was a little bit behind him, but it was the first pass, and it was a big one. Bolden just going to run a little square in, going to go down about 15 yards. Kind of rounds it off to the inside, but he makes the adjustment. It's a big drive for Fabian Walker in Florida State. Not the greatest motion in the world, kind of a sidearm, short arm delivery. Bob. Really doesn't get his, uh, really doesn't get his arm up. It's, uh, they say he's got a little bit of a shoulder problem and uh, may have to have it fixed after the season. From the 39 of Georgia, play action, pump fake. Now comes up short, out in the flat. Nice move by Maddox, as Maddox got to about the 35 yard line. We'll bring up second down at about six. It's impressive there. He looked downfield when you're a quarterback. A veteran or a rookie, you, your progression for your reads as you read deep to short. He looked deep. The post was not there. He came off to the middle range and then dumped it off to his outlet. Very impressive. David Pollock on the sideline already for Georgia. Their top pass rusher led the SEC in sacks. He's not in there right now on a second down and a long six. And already Florida State's move to the Georgia 36-yard line. They fake the end around and go straight up the middle with Maddox. It's over, it's Maddox over, fighting for it's yardage. Over, got it to the 31. It's all over. Chris Clemens and a host of Bulldogs there to help on the stop. Nick Maddox, a different kind of runner than Greg Jones, obviously. And our Tostitos player comparison of the Florida State backfield. Greg Jones, before being injured against Wake Forest, almost had a thousand yard season. We saw him just look remarkable against Miami. What a load he was in that game. But they've lost their whole middle. They lost their centers, two quarterbacks, and their running back. Ninth play of the drive. Third down and two. Georgia looks like they're coming on a blitz. Walker trying to change the play. He's going to have to hustle. And now there's movement. Anquan Bolden came out of his three-point stance, I know, and I think it's going to go against Florida State. That one just took too long, and you can see yeah. Brett Williams is saying, hey, kid, I've been in this huddle 46 games. you got to get faster than that. Hey, he had a lot of things going on there. Yes, he did. Jack McFerrin's our referee, our officials from the Pac-10 tonight. There was, line, there was movement on the offensive line, but we already had delay a game before that, so delay a game on the offense. Yeah, he had a lot of things Five going on there. Penalty, Third, Third down and short. All right, you want to get the first down. Now you see, now you see the defense. <clears throat> This is Jeff Bowden upstairs. He's, he's calling the plays down to Daryl Dickey, the quarterback coach, who sends him in. But you had a 
you had a quarterback in the third and short you had a defense that was attacking and then you also had to get the ball snapped within 25 seconds and he didn't do it now he's got a third down and seven to worry about Walker from the gun here comes the Georgia pressure and he got away from it again trying to put a move in the open field and got back across the line of scrimmage maybe picked up two but to Corey Bryant made the tackle and this that's might bring up fourth down this might be a situation is fourth you may, you may go for it on fourth down you got inside the uh, 35 yard line if you turned it over it wouldn't be a bad spot to give it to the other team and uh, I do not see Bathia and the field goal units you're right Bob they're going yep. just tucked inside the Georgia 35 it's fourth down it would be and a six it would be a 52 yard field goal you don't want to punt it so go ahead and let your offense do it and now it's Anquan Bolden at quarterback. Option. And he'll keep it spinning. Didn't quite get there. Georgia will take over on down. Pollock made the tackle. And Bolden almost danced his way to a first down, but Georgia will take over. We'll see their offense for the first time when we come back. Early in New Orleans, no score. now to Enhanced TV brought to you by Ford and the Bill Ford Tough Play of the Game. Enhanced TV is live now at ESPN.com. Daryl Dickey, the quarterback coach, talking with Fabian Walker. Looked pretty good on that opening hey, it drive. Was, it was a good drive. It was Ten plays, six and a half minutes. They started on their own 19. That's a positive drive. They did end up short on fourth down, though, so Georgia takes over. The Bulldogs offense working of its own 32 yard line. David Green in the shotgun. Gives it off. Lisa Smith inside. No gain. Travis Johnson in on the tackle. So there's David Green. Last year he was freshman of the year in the SEC. And now tremendous numbers this season. Over 2,800 yards. Only eight interceptions against 22 touchdown passes. And 20 and 5 his career record as a starter. The same record as Mark Richt. He's been the man for him, as Bob said, when we opened things up. Actually, a loss of a yard on the play. Second down and 11. And now Smith busts it off the right side. Musa Smith into the secondary. Foot race now. One man to beat. Down he goes. But he rips it all the way to the 31 yard line. Alonzo Jackson, I think, got a hand on his shoestring, or he might have been gone. It's a veteran offensive line. All seniors up front there. Good blocking, hat on hat, and then he makes the safety miss, and then it's just a, a foot race. Season long run of 39 yards for Smith. First thousand yard back for Georgia in 10 years, and he gets the dogs to the 30 yard line. Play action. Green comes up throwing, overshot his tight end, who was open, JT Wall. And let's take a look at the Nokia starting lineup. John Stinchcombs, an All-American, both academically and as a player. Jackson Knight, Breedlove making his 46th start. And Kareem Marshall. Smith, the tailback behind Wall, who that pass was intended for. Watson's a good tight end. And Gibson and Edwards, just two of four or five very good receivers for Georgia. Seven seniors on that offense for Georgia. Now it's second down at 10 at the 30. And again, Green will work from the shotgun. Draw play. Smith trying to cut it outside. Florida State's defense very fast, though. And a pickup of about three as we take a look at the Knowles defensively. Moore starts for the first time at defensive end as they shuttle some people around on the defensive front. Benford Johnson and Alonzo Jackson is the captain and leader there. Bowlware, Augustine, and Pope are the linebackers. And in the secondary, Samuels, Ward, Jerome Carter and Rufus Brown. Yeah, Daryl Dockett and Womble, two defensive tackles, are not playing because of injury and suspension. Tony Milton now has checked into the Georgia backfield. Green comes up to the line of scrimmage, calmly taking his time to change the play. Third down and seven. Here comes a blitz. Green down the middle, and he got his man at the 15. It's a first down, and it's Terrence Edwards, his favorite target. Pick up of 12 on third and seven. Well, it's a nice combination of Mark Rick and David Green. Mark Rick 
lays it out for uh, Green, and Green just executes it. Very intelligent. He's a field general. You'll see a lot of good play action fakes by David Green. And for Terrence Edwards, career catch number 202. And it nets Georgia first down at the Florida State 15. It's Milton. And he got three, almost four on the inside. Tony Milton in for Musa Smith to get some work. This is not your normal defense for Florida State in their championship years. They would be defensively in the top five of all four defensive categories. This defense is ranked 62nd in the nation and 95th against the pass. It's very unusual for Mickey Andrews to have a defense rated that high. Reggie Brown checks in as a third wide receiver for Georgia. He's slotted to the left side on a second down and a long six. It's Musa Smith that he's hit immediately. Nice job defensively. Florida State coming in and making the stop and forcing a third down and long. Mike Shaw made the tackle for Mickey Andrews defense. Mickey's been around a long time and a long time as Bobby was telling Lynn before the game. He said Mickey and Mark have gone at it in spring practice. That's when Rick was offensive coordinator and yeah. Andrews a defensive coordinator. Mark says I didn't get the best of it many times at all. Third and eight swing pass and it doesn't get much. And Shaw makes another stop on Musa Smith. And that'll bring out the Georgia field goal unit. But with Florida State being in the situation that they are with their third string quarterback having to play him. They're off their defense and their special teams have got to come up big. That flag may change the fact that the field goal unit was coming out because this is going against the Seminoles I think. That's how the Georgia offense is responding. Brad I think you're absolutely correct what happened Rufus Brown number seven for the Seminoles had been talking to the receiver on the opposite side. He continued to draw the play before the, the officials separate him. On this last play, he continued the conversation After the play, and the officials threw the flag. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike, on the defense. Automatic first down. Half the distance to the goal will still be fourth down. Well, I beg your pardon. Fourth down. It's still fourth down. But it isn't an automatic first down. Fourth and less than two. And it looks like uh, the Bulldogs are going to go for it. No, nope, they're going to kick it. Or are they? They're sending about 16 they guys come. in. Yep, there comes Bennett. A lot of guys coming and going. There's the guy that matters right now. Yeah. Billy Bennett, a junior and a local product right out of Athens. 22 of 28 on the season. 23 yard field goal attempt to put Georgia on the board. And it's the dogs out of the blocks first. Florida State's defense held, but Georgia gets three out of its opening march with 419 remaining first quarter. And the Georgia Bulldogs leading in New Orleans 3-0. Play Enhanced TV now at ESPN.com. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by the easy to use Nokia 3650 camera phone. Nokia connecting people. Ford F Series Super Duty with the all new Power Stroke Diesel. Circuit City, we're with you. And Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Georgia leading Florida State 3 0 on Billy Bennett's field goal. Rufus Brown with that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty got him close enough for the field goal. And Rufus got a little talking to during the timeout from the coaches on the sideline. Scoring drive 62 yards in nine plays. Big play was Musa Smith's run. Bottom line though, that, that uh, penalty on uh, Rufus uh, Brown didn't cost him, really didn't really hurt him because they were going to kick a field goal either way. Georgia set to kick away. Gardner and Leon Washington wait. Kerouac's kick. And 
it's Washington about three yards deep and Tom Gardner should stay right there so he will and it's a touchback and it will be Florida State from the 20 offensively we'll see if they can tie things up when we return. This is the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Florida State second offensive possession they trail by three. First time out they looked pretty good took it right down the field but faced a fourth down situation and came up short. Walker fakes the toss and he's going to go long for Anquan Bolden trying to adjust to the ball and he can't quite get to it. Kentrell Curry was back there with him defensively. First drive though Bobby looked pretty good. He did uh, Fabian Walker first drive first start. Third down scrambles a little bit nice move. He says I, I can do this it's you know I've been sitting on the bench watching but here's my chance hits a square in for a first down moved him 10 plays like I said six and a half minutes successful first drive and I like the first down play throw it down the field give him an opportunity to make a play. There's the numbers on Fabian Walker second down at 10 Florida State from its own 20 yard line as you look behind. Washington in their tailback nice play action but here comes the heat from the Georgia defense Walker got away from one and he's intercepted Curry picks it off for the dogs Georgia takes over on the first mistake of the ball game Curry was the guy covering Bolden on the previous play and this time from his safety position read the quarterback and got the pick he's trying to throw it to the crossing route. He's going to roll out to the uh, to the right side here but watch what happens when he gets out there the receiver crossing is who he's going to try and throw the ball to he's looking back to the inside of the field. This is the guy he's throwing at but he does not see number four Curry on the outside. That's the speed of the game that you don't get in practice. Nice interception by Kentrell Curry is fourth of the year. And now Georgia takes over at the Florida State 34 blitz coming green play action deep middle just overshot Watson is tight end. The safeties are there converging and Georgia wanted to go for all of it on the first play on a sudden change. Yeah and unlike Florida State Georgia throws to their tight end. Right. This kid's caught 30 passes on the year four for touchdowns when Mark uh, Rick was at Florida State they hardly ever threw to their tight ends. Brings up second down at 10. Again, Green will work from the gun. And a three wide receiver set. Green with the throw. This one's complete to Gibson. Caught it. No, no, Inside no, no, the 30 no. down to about the 28 yard line. And it will bring up a third down. All right, McFadden was there. Log on Enhanced TV at ESPN.com now for your chance to win a trip to next year's national championship game in this very building, I might add. The 70th Nokia Sugar Bowl next year will be for all the sugar. Third down and four. Georgia trying to capitalize on the interception. Florida State almost jumped defensively, and now Green again calmly backpedals, changes things up. Now he's down to five. Gets the snap away. Here comes a blitz. Smith trying to run by it and couldn't. See, that's something you very rarely see a quarterback do. It was third and five. Probably had a pass on, and he checked to a run. So Bennett, who hit one earlier to tie Kevin Butler's single season record of 23, will try to put his name in the record books all alone if he can hit this one. He's now 23 of 29 on the season. This will be a 47 yard field goal attempt by Billy Bennett. Kick on the way and it's going to stay left all the way. No good. So Florida State's defense does its job. Stopping Musa Smith forcing the long kick. And Georgia can't capitalize on the interception but they still lead three nothing. Georgia leading Florida State three to nothing and Fabian Walker at the controls at quarterback. Yeah one turnover last four games uh, coming into the ball game 
That turnover of Fabian's uh, didn't hurt him though. Missed field goal, back in business. At the 31, a little better field position to work with. And slipping through out to about the 35 is Leon Washington. Alonzo Jackson, one of the captains on the defense, knows number 12 probably as well as anybody. They played high school ball together in America's Georgia. Just a calm guy all the way around. Natural quarterback. Can really throw the ball. People don't. People don't really understand how well he can throw the ball. I mean, I played high school with him. I understand. I've seen him in clutch situations when it had to throw, had to be made, and he makes it. I got all the confidence in the world in him. That's the guy that's going to get it done for us. We'll see if he does. So far, he's done pretty well with the exception of one stray pass on the ground. And maybe a yard for Leon Washington. Tony Gilbert, the inside linebacker, made the stop again. Fabian Walker in America's Georgia was highly recruited over 8,000 yards passing everybody wanted this kid to play quarterback including Georgia everybody was after him Georgia. 81 touchdown passes. Yeah, Georgia was after him. Florida State was after him. Mark Rick got him at Florida State liked him better in high school as mechanics than he did uh, McPherson and Ricks who eventually came to um, Florida State. Fabian loves basketball and as a freshman at America's Alonzo Jackson says he wouldn't be playing football if I didn't drag him down to the field. He didn't want to play football. Third down and five. He's playing in a big football game right now. From the gun. Down the middle. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Looking for a flag is P.K. Sam. And he got one. Tim Jennings was there covering. It came over the top, it appeared. This would give Florida State a first down to keep the drive alive. Pass interference on the defense. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. You look at the uh, second receiver inside. Take a look at the slot guy. Sam's going to turn around number 81. Yeah, he got there just a little too early. The problem was the defensive back was all right. The ball didn't get yep. there quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Jennings can say that. Throw it faster, would you? Yeah. True freshman out of Orangeburg, South Carolina with a penalty. First down at 10 now for Florida State trailing by three here in the final minute of the first quarter from their own 45. Here's a toss to Washington and he got the corner. Did he get face masked? I think so. And flags fly from all over the place. Now he better be cool. The officials saw it. They had about three flags and he was being pretty emphatic about hey he grabbed my cage and he did the Corey Bryant. Face mask. Defense, 15 yards. So back to back penalties. It's a major face mask penalty, too, and you'll see it at the end of the play. Right yeah, there. Right there. He had it with both hands. Woo. Gotta let go of that one. I never played defense, but I don't know why a defensive guy would grab, like right there. You know, get a little lower. I mean, you, you got the angle. You're going to knock him out of bounds, or somebody's right behind you. You know, your defensive buddies are right there. I don't know why you reach up high to grab him. So they give Florida State, Georgia's defense, 25 yards and back to back plays. Yep. And all of a sudden they're down there and in, uh, inside the 35 well, yard line. Both of these teams are near the most penalized in their conference. And most of those penalties come on defense. They want aggressive style defense and that's uh, when Mark was at Florida State you know uh, Mickey Andrews he wants him aggressive and that's what he got with the McCorder Brian McCorder same way. At the 33 now. First down Seminoles. Walker straight drop flyers out the wide open in the flat as a tight end Patrick Hughes and we were just talking about the fact that Florida State virtually never throws to its tight ends and man somebody forgot to stay on number 82 he got 14 yards. Well this is the 14th game that Florida State has played this year and the fifth the fifth pass that the tight end has caught. Number 82 is just usually flare control. He says, hey, throw me the ball a little bit more. I can do this. That's a big target, too. 6'5, 265. And he rumbles inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Fabian Walker's completed passes to three different receivers now. And we're in the waning moments of the first quarter. Washington hit at the line of scrimmage and no gain on the play. Will Thompson, the sophomore out of Warner Robins, makes the tackle from his defensive end spot. And that is going to bring the first quarter of the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl to a close. 
Defensive battle so far. Georgia leading by three on a Billy Bennett field goal. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC's coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Georgia with a lead as we head into the second quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew at the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl at the Superdome in New Orleans. David Pollock trying to get the Georgia fans into it a little bit. <laughs> I love the way he plays defensive end and also a cheerleader on the field. Walker from the shotgun. Here comes a blitz. Walker over the middle. And is it complete? Anquan Bolden went to the turf. They say yes, he caught it. Right at the 10 yard line. Bruce Thornton there, pickup of nine. This is one of the problems with the throwing motion for Fabian Walker. He doesn't get his arm up, and he throws a lot of balls low. He's going to throw a run, a throw slant. The safety is going to blitz inside. Slant is right there. He just doesn't get the ball up. He was doing that about half the time in uh, pregame warm-ups when he was throwing that same route. You might have seen Anquan Bolden when he got up look at his elbow because he scraped it pretty good to have to go down and scrape that one off the turf. This is the first time Florida State's played on AstroTurf all year. Third down and a yard of the Georgia 10 and Fabian Walker doesn't want to blow an opportunity here for a score. So he'll call a timeout with 14-17 remaining first half. Still it's Georgia leading Bobby Bowden Seminoles by three. Florida State with a third down in the yard and the Seminoles come in with three tight ends. They're jumbo set. Brett Williams. They're all ACC tackles on the left side. Let's see if they go that way. Leon Washington's a tailback. They'll go straight up the gut. Oh big collision. But breaking free is the fullback B.J. Dean and he's got it first and goal. Just thinking that how many times in the last 10 years have you ever seen Florida State in a three tight end set. <laughs> I don't remember. And, and no wide receivers. Watch this collision with Tony Gilbert. Kaboom. Dean, who doesn't carry the ball very often, as mentioned, and he's just a, a blocking fullback, carries it there and picks it up. So, Bob and Brad, we've talked about the quarterback, Fabian Walker, and we know that he's not going to be perfect in this ball game. So what he's going to have to have is help from his teammates to make those big kind of plays and do something unexpected. So that's Florida State first and goal. They fake the toss. Walker wanted to go to Bolden and now does. His first in a Florida State uniform. Anquan Bolin's 13th of the year. It's a well-designed play. Bolden had plenty of time to run the route. And the thing that made it happen was the fact that Fabian Walker got outside the pocket, gave him plenty of time. Xavier Bapia in for the point after to try to give Florida State the lead. Uh, four and he does seven three 13 41 remaining in the half now and this guy's growing up in a hurry Walker to Bolden seven three Knowles the Nokia Sugar Bowl this ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by the easy to use Nokia 3650 camera phone, Nokia connecting people, FedEx, Ground International Online or Express, don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. Jeep, the most respected, honored and heroic 4x4s out there, only in a Jeep 4x4. And new Tostitos Gold, the perfect chip for hearty dips. When you've got Tostitos, you've got a party. Go back to the touchdown. Here you go. Look at look what we got out here. We got all this. We got all the other guys inside. Now what he's going to do, he's going to come down, run all the way in, and come back to the outside. The quarterback's going to get outside the pocket. That's what gives him time to run this route. He goes all the way in and comes back out. The defensive back says, hey, you ain't got time to run that. But he doesn't know that the quarterback is outside the pocket. And the fake toss by Walker sealed off that Georgia defense with the exception of the guy trying to stay with Anquan Bolden. And it's 7-3. You know, the other thing that helped that drive was all the penalties. No 
doubt. The face mask and the other one. Gibson takes it about seven yards deep and he'll take a knee. So Georgia will have to work from its own 20 yard line now and behind for the first time today. Trailing seven to three with 1335 to go in the half. Anquan Bolden who came into Florida State because he wanted to be a quarterback. <laughs> Swanee that didn't last too long. He didn't stay quarterback that long. Well he only stayed the quarterback for a day. Matter of fact other schools have promised him a chance. Well they, they, they look at him and said maybe you can be quarterback. We want you to be a wide receiver. But when he said he wanted to be a wide receiver Bobby Bowden said you better go home and talk to your daddy. Make sure he knows that was your decision not mine. That's right. Bobby said he could play quarterback at FSU and then he was surprised. Only took about a practice. Nice play fake by Green. And he's been a quarterback his whole life. And here he goes to Reggie Brown. And Reggie's got a first down. Green, so cool. And mature beyond his years he because uh, he's just a sophomore. Yeah, there's a lot of things I like about him. He's in control. He's a very cool customer. And he's just another coach on the field. He's played for two years, he's had 25 starts. And he's going to get to play two more years at the University of Georgia. First down. Green fires. This one he was trying to get to his tight end. Watson's looking for a flag and doesn't get one. E.J. Ward was there from his safety spot defensively. Our Aflac trivia question, our final one of the year. Over the last two seasons, Georgia Bulldog players have been awarded black and white bone decals for their helmets. What do those colors signify? Well, we'll tell you a little bit later. Well, that's 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 not fair because you live in Georgia. Well, uh, Swanee and I are outside the state. I give so. you I give you a hint. There's a lot more white bones on helmets than there are black bones. Whoa. On most guys' helmets. And another hint: John Stinchcomb's got a lot of both. <laughs> well, I probably just give it away right there. Didn't I? <laughs> Second down and ten. Play action out in the flat. Watson was open and Green underthrew him. He made the catch. But he was down right there because he had to go to the turf to make the catch and he picked up five. Well Watson did the good thing instead of just trying to reach for it and run. He made sure that he caught the football. Before he tried to run with it. And that's another third down and five situation for Georgia. Georgia 41 percent on their third down conversions this year during the season. A season that has so far produced 12 wins in 13 outings. Their only loss was to Florida, 20 to 13. Green on third and five, wanted to pump fake. Here comes the pressure, and down he goes. First sack of the night. Travis Johnson, I think, is going to get credit for it, but Michael Bowler is the guy that made the play. And he had a guy. They went, they stopped and went stop and go, and he didn't see the receiver. Down here, he's going to run a little stop and go. Gonna stop right there. Look at him jump and look at him. He's running right past him. But by that time, he had other things to worry about. And so that's a punting situation. Kilgo set to kick. Florida State packing nine in there like they're going to put some heat on the putter. They're after this one. They don't get there, and he got off a dandy. Leon Washington waits on it at the 21 yard line. Washington, some room to work, though, after the long punt. He got back to about. The 34 I think is where they're going to spot it as a field judge comes over to put his foot down after a 48 yard kick coming up uh, the Pontiac performance halftime show John Saunders and Terry Biden will break down today's early bowls and take a look ahead to the FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow night and then the national championship Tostitos Fiesta Bowl John and Terry coming up at halftime in about 12 minutes. From high atop the Superdome we look down. On the Florida State offense that scored a touchdown last time after going 69 yards in eight plays used a little under four minutes to cap it with Walker's touchdown throw to Anquan Bolden three possessions for Florida State one touchdown Walker's confidence gaining as he goes trying to get away from a sack and down he goes and it's going to be Will Thompson who's had a good first half here Thompson's kind of the guy nobody talks about because Pollock had yeah. so many sacks and Sullivan's such a NFL prospect but watch number 58 stay with it. You got it. He's right here on the outside number 58. He gets blocked gets blocked. That's a sack. That's a coverage sack downfield but credit Thompson for not giving up. Will's fifth sack of the year. And it forces second down and 18 now. Those are the kind of situations you don't want to get in 
with a first time starting quarterback. Well now you automatically think like Florida State just don't make a mistake here. They're backed up just inside their own 27. Walker's going to try to take Gilbert. off with it on his own. Tony Gilbert is the first guy that hit him. And Boss Bailey cleaned up and it will going to bring up a third down and long. Bailey was a was a high school quarterback. I saw him before the game and he's he's 6'3 and 230 and he's kind of thin. And he was a uh, it was a, hur a hurdler in in uh, high school. He made the state finals of just an outstanding athlete. Three block kicks this year. One of those we'll show you later on. He, oh, of course, is Champ Bailey's little brother, if you want to say little. Can he? He's got a vertical jump like you wouldn't believe. Third and 15. Walker flares it out to Maddox in the flat. Nick's trying to make something out of it. Got back across the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be fourth down and about six. And Florida State will have to give it up. Well, the sack by Thompson is the one, the, the play that really blew that uh, series up for Florida State. And as you said, after that, you could just see that Florida State was thinking, no turnovers right here. Let's just kick. That's right. They ran an option with Walker, and then they ran a little safe pass out to Maddox. Chance Gwaltney is second team all ACC performer as a putter and you saw a third in the conference in kicking almost 40 yards per punt his first one of the night Damian Gary waits on the other end he's a good one he missed some time due to kind of a strange illness but he's back in there and he's running up on this one did he touch it it goes out of bounds it doesn't matter I guess he did touch it and at about the 32 yard line that's where Georgia will take over Nine minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the half. Florida State leading Georgia here in New Orleans. That's David Green's start. He's going to take a break from this offensive series. D.J. Shockley's committed quarterback, redshirt freshman, out of College Park, Georgia. Fourth series of the game for Georgia. David Green took the first three. This was the plan. Mark Rick told us this would happen. Shockley runs into one of his own blockers now is trying to make something out of the play got away from Alonzo Jackson and he lost the ball and B.J. Ward's got to go the other way thank your pardon it's Kyler Hall the safety Hall took it right out of midair he just squirted right out of Shockley's hands Shockley in for the game trying to make too much happen just didn't hold on to the football was almost going to make a great play Turn a negative play into a positive and then turns it over. Florida State gets gets penalized for blocking below the waist after the interception. So Florida State keeps the ball. DJ Shockley, it was predetermined. Mark Rick wanted him athletically to play a lot this after year and share time with David Green. Block below the waist. On the offense, they'll keep the ball. After a 15 yard penalty, it'd be first and 10. And to be honest with you, DJ played a lot more before the Florida game because in that game, the only loss for Florida, this interception really is what was the difference. And from that point on, also there was an injury mixed in there at a time, but he didn't play as much as he had yeah. up to that game. Now, let me say this I, I agree with what Mark Rick has done. You have two quarterbacks, they are, they are both talented. If one gets hurt, at the end of the season, you better have somebody else that go in and play. The unfortunate thing is, when the second guy comes in, everybody is up to speed, game speed, and you may not be. So sometimes you come in and you'll turn the ball over, but George has done a pretty good guy job of overcoming any mistake that Shockley has made. And they have talked with him about his plans. We'll talk about that in a moment here as a handoff goes. Maddox, Maddox got about three, maybe four. Will Thompson made the tackle. DJ Shockley has said this past week or so that he is planning to return to Georgia. There's a lot of talk about whether or not he would transfer to another school because, quite frankly, he wants to be a starting quarterback, play full time. His dad's a coach. Don's a coach at North Clayton High School, and uh, he's talking over his dad. He says, I'm coming back. Well, Shockley is a redshirt freshman. He's in his second year. Green, David Green has two more years to play right. if he wants. And Mark Richt obviously wants him to stay. And Green knows he's staying. Here's Walker. Flipped it out in the flat. Incomplete intended for Maddox. And it's incomplete. Just to make sure. 
Georgia was picking that ball up, thinking it might have been a lateral. Sean Jones picked it up, headed to the end zone. And Bob and Brad, I just want to point out one thing that has worked to the advantage of Fabian Walker and Florida State, and that's the fact that the crowd seems to be sitting on its hand. Boy, you're not kidding. Unfortunately for Fabian, the Florida State team wasn't really able to work with him a lot with crowd noise before this game. So you figure a young guy coming in who had to deal with a lot of crowd noise would be a real problem. But these fans have really been sitting on their hands. I think there was a little too much French Quarter last night, Swanee. Third down and six. Well, you mean for the players? The players. No, no, <laughs> the fans, not for the players. Here's yeah. Walker. And he's got it complete. Tom and Gardner. Oh, PK Sam. On third down and long six, he finds Sam. For eight in the first down. I think that's like the fourth completion for a first down for Fabian Walker. Just pitch and catch. You know, PK Sam is like the, the fourth or fifth receiver. I'm right. sure Fabian Walker had a lot of practice with him when he was down at third straight quarterback. <laughs> Probably his favorite receiver. He and PK huh? got a lot of time together. <laughs> Looking into the Seminole huddle, they lead seven to three. Eight twenty remaining in the first half. And a first down at the 38 yard line of Georgia. There's the first down play selection. More runs than passes. This one will be an end around Anquan Molden. So he's thinking about throwing. Yeah, there was a receiver downfield, but he wasn't open. He just kept it and ran it. Moss Bailey stayed right with him, and Bailey made the tackle. Take a look, Bailey's number 45 right in front of us. He sees, he waits, he knows he has contained. He just goes out and says, all right, Anquan, where are you? I'm going to come and get you. <laughs> he was stalking him. Bailey, the leading tackler for Georgia, had 109 tackles coming in. Second team All-American, did make the Walter Camp first team All-American linebacking team. Second down at 10. Off the left side inside the 35 is Nick Maddox. And he got about four. Friday night, Keith Jackson, Dan Fouts, Todd Harrison, Arlen Swan will get together. The only two undefeated teams in the nation meet for the national championship. Kenny Dorsey and Willis McGahee in Miami against Krenzel and Maurice Claret, number two Ohio State. It's a Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. Coverage starts Friday night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Sports Championship Television. There's our quarterback comparison to Steedo's quarterback matchup. They're not used to losing, are they? No, they aren't. 38 and 1 and 14 and 1. That ain't bad. Third down and six for a guy making his first ever start. Walker getting some pressure. Loft set and it's intercepted. Down the sidelines, Bruce Thornton. Thornton. He's got everybody beat. He's gone. at the end of the play probably for the strut into the end zone 71 yards but Thornton did a little bit too much Dion from about the 12 yard line in and I think that's what the flags are going to be about this is one of the critical mistakes that Bowden was talking about before the ball game he was trying to get rid of it not take the sack he just threw it out in the flat and it was it was an easy pick for Thornton. Here's a call. Touchdown is good. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike celebration on the offense. 15 yard penalty. He was strutting before he got to the end zone. Nick Maddox still looked like he maybe had a shot at him and he started strutting way early and uh, that's what he's getting in the ear from his head coach right now. Nonetheless, a 71-yard interception return. What it does force, though, is a 35-yard extra point for Billy Bennett. And this is no chip shot. He's perfect on the year on extras, 50 for 50, almost getting a hand on it, but he got the kick up and in. That was close to being blocked. But the miscue, the second interception by Walker. Thornton dancing in for Georgia. They lead by three. Watching the Nokia Sugar Bowl on ABC Sports. 
Bob, the first Walker misfire didn't cost him. This one did. It did. It did. And, and, and the shock, the mistake, didn't hurt him. He's trying to throw the ball to the receiver right here. But look at the re right receiver. The, the defensive back right there is going to pick it off and take it down the sideline. Just a little overthrow. You just can't do too much. You know, you got to take a sack. You got to make sure that the ball that you throw is not going to be picked off, and he made a mistake. So second interception turns into a Georgia touchdown. Their third interception for a touchdown this year for the Dogs. Second pick of the year for Thornton. He was penalized for the high strut on the way to the end zone. Darrell Dickey spent much of the time out talking to number 12 there, trying to keep his quarterback cool about the mistakes he's made. Tolman Gardner will take the kick from the seventh. Trying to go to the wide side and outrun everybody, and Gardner gets out to about the 30, maybe the 31 yard line. Our AFLAC trivia question we asked you earlier. Over the last two seasons, Georgia players have been awarded black and white bone decals for their helmets. What do the colors signify? Swanee, your guess. Well, let me see. If they're not uh, chocolate and vanilla <laughs> dog bones, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that the uh, white bones are for achievement on the field. Maybe the the black bones are for the academic achievements in the classroom. Boy, now this is a guy that does a lot of work. Hey, I'm, I'm going with vanilla and chocolate. You like ice cream. that? Oh, you I like that? that? Yeah, especially with Uga. It uh, is what Swanee said. The white bones for what you do on the field, and the black ones for academic achievement. That's why I said Stinchcomb's got a whole bunch of both because he's an academic All-American and a first-team All-SEC performer. Will Thompson's having a first-team SEC-type first half. I'll tell you that. Second sack for him. And there's the official answer. And our AFLAC trivia question contest for the year is over. Did they do that before Mark Rick got there, or was that just since Mark? I think it's just since Mark with the adding the academic ones. Yeah, I, I, Mark's done a lot of nice things in Athens since he's gotten there. He's, well, he's, this whole thing is like a family. Yep, he's embraced the tradition of uh, Georgia football, loves it. Vince Dooley, of course, the athletic director, was longtime head coach. And the last guy to bring Georgia down to New Orleans for a Sugar Bowl. And uh, hopefully uh, Vince is going to join us in the second half a little bit. Second down and 13. Walker in trouble. Down he goes. He was in big trouble because somebody went the wrong way. It looked like an option and the, D the back went the other way. If he would have pitched that ball, it, nobody was there to take it. Darius Swain, freshman, made the hit on him and that's third down and a mile again. Five minutes left in the half. Georgia by an interception return for a touchdown leading Florida State by three. And I don't think it was uh, Fabian who went the wrong way. I think it was the back that went the wrong way. Third down and 16. Washington is the tailback. Let's see if they play it safe or not. They will. And he's going over. Sullivan the defensive tackle made the stop big fell out of Griffin Georgia that a lot of people think may turn pro when this game's over don't forget coming up at the half it's a Nokia snapshot jackpot and the lucky fan has a chance of winning two hundred thousand dollars all coming up at the Nokia snapshot jackpot so I'm sure some nerves in that family right now and four minutes and change remaining here in the half as Gwaltney's set to punt inside his own 15 yard line. Hangs up the kick. Gary again bobbles it this time, but he finds the handle. And he's all the way down to the 38 yard line of Florida State. Great field position for the dogs. They've got the lead, they've got the ball, and they'll have a first down when we come back to the Superdome in a moment. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. Back at the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl. Just under four minutes left in the half. Georgia leading by three. And Bob, Mark Rick staying with DJ Shockley even despite the interception the last trip. Yeah, I like that. I mean, uh, you know, quarterbacks, if they play, they're going to throw interceptions. We've got bad plays. And I think Shockley's attitude is, hey, if I play a 25 plays, I may only have one interception. Let me play. Here he is off play action. Deep ball. Terrence Edwards. Go! And Georgia just shocked Florida State. One play after the punt return, they score again. I guess 
thinks the coach knows what he's doing. I think maybe he does. And there you see David Green, one of the first to high five DJ Shockley as he comes to the sideline. Shockley's fifth touchdown pass on the year. And Terrence Edwards, 30th of his career, which is one shy of the all time SEC record. Here it is again. Great field position. Edwards on Samuels. He makes him miss at the line of scrimmage. Now he's got the advantage. He slows down because the ball is is a little bit short to defend against the defensive back. And he says yeah that's what I can do just let me let me a chance. David Green who started the ball game and always does it. Yeah we'll take it baby. Touchdown Georgia. A lot of weapons. Georgia leads the SEC in points scored and fewest points allowed. And Bob and Brad, what's so terrific about that play, in addition to everything you already said? So when Edwards came off the line of scrimmage, Samuels gave him the inside. He could have just, he could have taken it, but instead he forced the outside position on the release, and able the quarterback to have a good angle to throw that ball. You're wondering, that's a happy face from Uga. <laughs> Uga doing a little dance. I Georgia love, in the uh, last about uh, 18 seconds has scored two touchdowns. Yeah. So so much for time of possession because Florida State's had the ball more than twice as much as Georgia but the dogs lead Terrence Edwards last touchdowns made it 17 to 7 receiving yardage school record nobody's ever had a thousand yard year and unless Terrence goes to sleep at halftime and doesn't come out to the third quarter he's going to hit the magical thousand yard mark and he's already caught a couple of balls here today his 200 second and 203rd of his career and his 30th touchdown Craig East of Kentucky and Chris Doring are the guys that share the record of 31 SEC touchdown catches in a career. Edwards is not that big, only weighs like 177 pounds. Kerouac's kick floats down to Leon Washington at the seven. And only to the 21. He's smothered there. The road to the Super Bowl begins on ABC's Wild Card Saturday. First, Chad Pennington. Is anybody hotter than him right now? He and the Jets against Peyton Manning and the Colts. And in prime time, following that one, it'll be Michael Vick in the Falcons against Brett Favre and the Packers. Our NFL Wild Card doubleheader gets underway at 4 Eastern. And that follows the 76ers and the Mavericks game Saturday on ABC. We've got a big day of sports for you. Couple Hoops of, and football. Couple of pretty hot, uh, hot teams there. No doubt. Anquan Bolden. Is coming out to line up at quarterback in the shotgun. The gloves are off. Gloves are off, and he does something that uh, no, I've never seen a quarterback do. He throws the football without putting his hands on the seams of the ball. He doesn't put his hands on. Rolls to his right, throws a wobbler intended for Tallman Gardner. I think he should have put his hands on the laces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anquan was a great high school player as well. He was the player of the year in the state of Florida because of those senior statistics. And then, of course, Adrian McPherson was Florida's Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball and became the starter about two thirds of the way through this season. And then, with an investigation going on about the theft of a check, Adrian McPherson was removed from the team. Chris Ricks, who started most of the games this year, suspended for this one for missing exams. And that's why Florida State's running number four out there, quarterback. And Bolden. Got a first down. Great run. That's what Bob was talking about earlier. You can't take away from the athletic ability of what he can do like that. And this this is not a small guy. He's 6'2 and 225 pounds, and he's very athletic. He's like I said, he's probably the best athlete on the field playing quarterback, and now he's just playing running back right here. And you got to remember, he's coming back from an ACL that kept him all of last right. year exactly. out of the lineup. Yeah. Tonight, as a receiver and a quarterback, what he's done. He does have the touchdown catch, but now here he is on the other end taking the snaps. First down, Florida State after that 12 yard scramble. Here's the option. Toss to Washington. Washington cuts it up tough inside and stays on his feet. Lost the ball. Fumbled. I think Florida State's still on top of it. They are. And they gained some yardage on the fumble at about the 48. Cravanzo Thorpe, number one, is on the bottom of the pile. The Florida State's drive stays alive. They move the sticks. 2:45 remaining in the half, as they try to battle back from 10 down to Georgia. Bobby doesn't call the plays, but he interjects every now and then 
That's what he's on the phone for. The ball comes out on a good hit. Kentrell Curry, Curry is the guy that yeah. had the interception earlier. Bobby's talking to his son Jeff in the press box, who calls the plays down through Daryl Dickey, the quarterback coach. Here comes some heat from the shotgun. Bold in his air and it out long, and he's got a man. Oh! Tallman Gardner dropped it. Big play, Tallman. Had it right there. Bold and threw that thing about 60 yards. It just looked like Tolman Gardner sort of short armed that thing. I don't know if Swanee had a better view than we did, but it was out there. I thought he was going to overthrow him at first. Take a look. Well, he oh. got his arms out there, but he should have probably had it. Oh. That's perfect. That's a perfect throw. What a great throw that was. <laughs> wow. Knew it too. Did he throw that thing a mile? Oh, he threw it. <laughs> I don't know if he had the laces or not, Grease. <laughs> he got it out there, man. I don't think he did. He threw that for probably the 40. He probably threw it 60 yards, and then he threw it to the sideline oh. sub, so probably about 70 altogether. Perfect throw, and it's all for naught. It's second down and 10. Four wide outs for Bolden here. George is going to blitz off the corner, and he'll keep it on a quarterback draw, but there's nowhere to hide from the Georgia defense right now. Pollock was the first guy there. And got help from Ken Veal. So it's going to be third down and long. What could have been a 17-14 game is instead a third down and long situation. Well, Talman Gardner, 21, who dropped that pass, guys, is going to have to get over very quickly. He is, grew up in the 19th ward here in New Orleans. Yeah. You know he wanted that pass so bad. His mom is here watching him play in this football game, and he'll just have to get over it because Anquan Bolden's going to need him. And Bolden, they're working on him. His shoulder, apparently, is the problem on the sideline. So back comes Fabian Walker. And we continue to play musical quarterbacks. With a minute 33 remaining in the half, and Anquan's down, and on the same play, Leon Washington had to be helped off the field. The starting tailback, or the uh, actually Maddox started, but uh, Washington's played more than Maddox has at tailback. And while we check on Anquan Bolden and have a timeout with 133 left in the half, take a look at our Chrysler passing playbook, Bob. Well, let's take a look at this. We showed this a little earlier. Now watch. All the players are to this side of the screen. Now watch the play action. He's going to fake the ball to the top of the screen. Watch the toss right there. Now that holds everybody. That holds everybody. Now you got one on one down here at the bottom of the screen. Now your wide receiver has plenty of time to run his route and he still has got plenty of time to come out and there's nobody out there to help the receiver. That's just smart play calling one on one. Let your guy beat their guy and don't let anybody else get around him. So the playbook is if you can play use some play action and get your quarterback outside the pocket with some time, the receiver can do a lot of things. So that was Anquan Bolden, the receiver with Florida State's only touchdown. Anquan Bolden, the quarterback who's played in this series and one previous to this, banged up on that last quarterback draw. We don't know if it's a shoulder or a hand, but Fabian Walker's back in there now, quarterback. And he'll work from the gun and under the gun on third down and 12. Georgia delayed blitz. He's waiting too long. Down he goes again. This one's Thomas Davis. Not a safety blitz. Yeah, good coverage downfield. Nobody was open. And Davis, who has played some linebacker this year and some safety, gets in there like a linebacker. So now Florida State's got to punt it away. And let's see if Georgia tries to put the return on or the heat on number 37. Yeah, this would be a time to go for it. Georgia has blocked nine kicks this year. Five of those have been punts. Walton got it away. Flags are down. And you know why? He didn't get it off in time. And Gary on the return coming the other way. And Damian bounced into a pile of white shirts and bounced out of it. And again, penalty marker. Here's Chuck McFerrin. It is a holding call. Trying to prevent anybody from getting in there to block the punt, apparently. 
Now here was Anquan Bolden on the uh, quarterback draw a few moments ago that we talked about. And you're going to see him go down under a pile of Bulldogs defenders. And right there, maybe the I don't know. Maybe it's his left. We his left. Well, the, both wrists kind of got buried under that pile. Yeah. Guys, it's his left hand. I just yeah. went over and talked to the sideline. They're calling a left hand contusion. They say he will be back in the ball game. All right. Kind of fell on it. Got squashed. The call, preliminary call that we got was holding against Florida State, as you saw him point to the punting team. But now there's a discussion going on right now. Right now, as to whether or not it's against Georgia or Florida State. Maybe they pointed the wrong way. Initially, it was against Florida State on a hold. So Chuck McFerrin will straighten it out for us here in a second. Both teams are around their respective coaches. The only people we have on the field right now are officials. All right, Chuck, we don't do anything with the next 39 seconds unless no. until you tell us yeah. what it is. Right? Yeah, here's the official yeah. that throws the flag. It was probably defensive holding. holding. On the defense. Yeah. Yep. They that penalty the wrong is way. accepted. Be marked from the previous spot. Ten yard penalty will still be fourth down. So they have to punt it again. Now that's why all the discussion is it was not a first down. Do you accept the penalty or mm -hmm. punt? So they'll have to do it all over again. Yeah, they'll punt it again. And that means that there's one more chance for it to be blocked. Yep. And there's one more chance for it to be returned. Well, we got a moment here. Reminder tomorrow night. Don't miss a battle between two of the nation's top quarterbacks. Heisman Trophy winner Carson Palmer will lead USC against Heisman runner-up Brad Banks and the Iowa Hawkeyes. FedEx Orange Bowls tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. The Bowl Championship Series continues on ABC Sports Championship Television. I like that game. Yep, that'll be fun to watch. That's going to be a good one. That's like the Rose Bowl East. Yep. In the Orange Bowl. Waltney. Kicks it high. Gary's got a call for a fair catch. So Florida State came out pretty well on this. They gained some ground, about 15 yards difference by the repunt. Tallman Gardner thinking about what could have been. This one, he said he's got to forget about it because he's going to be the main target for whoever's the quarterback if Anquan Bolden is banged up or if Anquan Bolden is the quarterback. Coming into the game, he had had 37 receptions and eight touchdowns, and he was. Their big play guy along with Bolden. There's that time of possession I talked about. It's now almost three times as much, and it means absolutely zero because Georgia has touchdowns, two of them, in a span of about 18 seconds. And, 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 and the, the way they happened was they intercepted one and ran it back for a touchdown, and they had a one-play drive where they threw a touchdown. And that one-play drive was seven seconds. Thornton's 71-yard interception return probably took him about 10. So that's why I'm adding that one and that one and getting 17 or 18. Alonzo Jackson talked with us about Florida State coming in nine and four. A lot of people thought they shouldn't even be in the BCS with four losses and he thought they were getting a little bit disrespected too by Georgia. I mean Georgia has done a lot of talking. I mean it might not just been them. It might just be their fans but it just been yep yep this yep yep that left and right talking about this talking about that. Oh we're going to do this and we're going to do that. The fullback saying he's going to do this he's going to do that. They're good. Yes they're good. I mean what they're talking is extremely too much to be coming in playing a team that can really play the game of football. And everything going to be set on the field. I mean I told my whole defensive unit the whole team we're going to let them talk. We're going to settle we're going to say what we're going to say and do our talking on the field. That's Alonzo, a first team all ACC performer, 11 sacks this year. I haven't seen a lot of Georgia guys mouthing off. Almost going to get a flag here before this half ends, maybe. Musa Smith, there's some talking going on right now, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. As David Green took a knee and somebody just shoved Musa Smith the right to the ground. Eric Powell, I think, was the guy, but no flags. And they're going to let the clock wind down. Georgia's going to be content with their 10 point halftime lead. So again, Florida State had the ball most of the half. Georgia at the half has the lead. That's all they care about. And their fans give them a big ovation as they lead 17 to 7. And we head down to Swanee.
Well, of course, you got the halftime lead, but there's an awful big difference in time of possession. It means nothing because you have the lead. Right. But do you have to change how you control the floor of this game in the second half? Well, I don't know what we're going to do yet. I know we got to get more uh, something more going on offense. You could go fast or slow. It doesn't matter. If you don't get any first downs, you're not going to have any time of possession. But thankful we got the lead right now. And... Uh, we just have to play better in the second half. That last series, Anquan Bolden comes in as a quarterback. If he should start in the second half, the fact that he played in that last series give you a little advantage or a little idea of what they might try and do? Well, they probably showed a good bit of what, what they like to do with him. And uh, shooting through a beautiful bomb that should have been a touchdown, but uh, they just didn't make the catch. He's a heck of a football player. I remember him from high school. He's one of the best players in the state of Florida. Well, you have to recruit him. You know him well. Thanks, yes, Coach. I was going to say, Swanee, when he says them, I can tell it's still hard for him. He knows those kids and loves them all. But right now, his beloved dogs are leading by 10 at the break. So we sent it to our Pontiac Performance Halftime Show. Here's the hardest working guys today in TV. Here's John and Terry. Fellas. Without question, we won't even argue that point on this day. But as far as Florida State goes, when you're playing with your third string quarterback, it doesn't matter what he did in high school, right. doesn't matter how talented he is, you cannot afford to make mistakes, and that's what they have done. Well, they're putting so much responsibility on his shoulders, making him throw the passing game like they have, and he's had a couple interceptions. One of them has gone for a pick, but the defense has played pretty well. They've kept the offense. Offense has stayed on the field. They've got to continue to do that, because if they get more than 10 points behind Georgia, there's going to be some real problems catching up with this quarterback. And you heard the question to Mark Rick right. should he be concerned about the time of possession well really they're scoring so fast he, he has not been but yes he should be because again if the other team starts scoring if Florida State puts puts points on the board then they're gonna have a trouble, trouble time getting the ball back enough all right we will continue with more of the Pontiac performance halftime show in just a moment from here in Times Square scores and highlights and we'll get you ready for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl This is the Pontiac Performance Halftime Show, brought to you by Pontiac, fuel for the soul. From Times Square in New York, here now, John Saunders and Terry Bowden. The celebration of New Year's Day as we say Happy New Year's once again, and there's a Circuit City Trophy. That is what they'll be playing for Friday night in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Number one, Miami against number two, Ohio State. Now, we know, of course, Larry, Co Larry Coker, as the head coach of Miami, has already won a national championship. There's been a lot made of that. But how about Jim Trestle? He has four, although not at this level. That's right. Everybody looks at Larry Coker and say, boy, you've been to the top level, Division One. You've brought your team to the championship. You know how to prepare, how to come to the bowl game, how to put the game. what he a championship caliber program and he'll have his team ready and perhaps not enough is being made of that one thing that you never got when you were coaching it's a scouting report from the other team we have two I'm Larry Coker head football coach of the University of Miami Hurricanes and this is our scouting report on the Ohio State Buckeyes <laughs> They pose a lot of challenges because one of their main goals on defense from what we can see is to try to stop the run. We're going to have to try our best to be able to run the football and, and find ways to run to eight and nine men front. Correct. Anticipate a tough runner. I anticipate speedy back. He's a competitor like I am. He's going to go in there and try to run me over, do whatever he can to get away from me. And I have to do my best to get him down on the ground. And their defense is something similar to Boston College. They do a lot of zone blitzing. But you know, I'm not worried about it because my old line's not worried about it. As long as they got confidence, I'm going to have confidence. So we just want to go out there and do what we have to do. I think one of the biggest things is, is keeping a level head. And, and if I can do that, the team's going to be able to do that. This is Jim Tressel, head football coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. And this is our scouting report of the Miami Hurricanes. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's kind of type of a Maurice Claret, you know, likes to set up his blockers. Then he has, like, Maurice Hall type speed. He's definitely going to be a player that can very elusive and great vision, so I have to definitely read my keys and play smart. Dorsey in his, uh, you know, his preparation. I think giving him three weeks, you know, almost four weeks to prepare for this game is dangerous. Smart, you know, I think he doesn't make a mistake in their offense, and uh, he does his part, and uh, he makes big plays. I don't really look at his, it as myself going up against against Ken Dorsey. I look at, you know, it's, it's Ohio State going against Miami. It is a pleasure to, to have the ability to, you know, be able to watch a guy like him play in person. You know, he's 38-1 as a starter. He's obviously a tremendous leader, and you know, he does a great job directing their offense. 
The comparison has been made to two years ago, Florida State defending national champion coming in against Oklahoma with an undescript type of offense. Let's make the comparison between the offense and the defense. These numbers, as the expression goes, someone's got to give on this. That's right. You've got just a great offense against a great defense. But I look at the passing area, and I see that with that where there might be a concern. You see the great passing numbers by Miami, giving up numbers by Ohio State. The one thing you think Miami would have a good chance to do, no matter how well Ohio State plays run defense, is throw the football. Are you concerned at all for Miami is fact that they could not stop the run during the regular season. They gave up 45 points to Virginia Tech in the final game. They did, but the big thing is Miami does not need a lot of time to score yeah. football. Even if the other team possesses the ball and controls the clock, they score so quickly, they're not going to worry too much unless those runnings are going into touchdowns. Case in point, two minutes, two seconds. That's how long yeah. they average for touchdown drives this year. It's an incredible number. Earlier today, here on ABC, the Rose Bowl game presented by PlayStation 2, and there's head coach Mike Price and head coach Bill Doba. Mike Price is headed, of course, to Alabama. Nate Hibble goes 12 yards to Antoine Savage. Oklahoma had a 10 to nothing lead for Washington State. Their quarterback, Jason Gesser, with a great season, but he did not have the mobility today. Gets sacked. He, of course, is the bad ankle. Jonathan Jackson gets that one. Then Antonio Perkins, 51 yards on this punt return for the touchdown. Oklahoma showed just how deep they were. They sure are. They are so good. They put so much pressure on Jason Gesser because Washington State couldn't run the football, and you cannot be a one-dimensional football team against uh, Oklahoma. And their running attack, Quentin Griffin, he's a difference maker on their team. He's been great this year. They're going to miss him next. Yeah, Griffin, 30 carries for 144 yards and a touchdown. Nate Hibble was the MVP, 19 of 29, 240 yards and a couple of touchdowns. As you look ahead, <laughs> Mike Price going to Alabama. If you're a fan right now, it's only one game, but guess what? Game two of next season, right. they have to face Oklahoma again. Well, you know, one thing about Mike Price, he won't use that game plan at Alabama. <laughs> but he'll look at Oklahoma, he'll be able to study it, and I think he'll have a better plan for Alabama in the next year, for Oklahoma again next year. All right, Mike Price, of course, moving on. We wish him luck. It seemed like he spent his entire life, though, at Washington State. We'll continue with more of the Pontiac Performance Halftime Show from here in New York. Thus far, Georgia with a 17-7 lead over Florida State. Welcome to the Pontiac Performance Halftime Show. John Saunders alongside of Terry Bowden, and we certainly hope on this wonderful New Year's Day that it is drier where you are than it is here in New York. One place we know it's drier in Miami, where Game 3 of the BCS will be played tomorrow night in the FedEx Orange Bowl, Iowa against USC. Let's join Tim Brandt. Player Stadium is a venue that appreciates great quarterbacking, and why not? They had one of the best of all time in Dan Marino. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Ed Cunningham. The FedEx Orange Bowl features the two best quarterbacks in college football this year. Heisman Trophy winner Carson Palmer and runner-up Brad Banks. But this game, Ed, has a lot more intrigue than just the quarterbacks. And when Iowa has the ball, the matchup to watch is tight end Dallas Clark. Mackey Award winner is the finest tight end in the country against two-time All-American strong safety Troy Polamalu of USC. If you haven't seen this guy play, he's sensational. Now, when USC has the ball, Mike Williams, a standout freshman wide receiver for USC, 6'5", 230 pounds, 75 catches against shorter corners from Iowa. That could be a mismatch that Palmer likes to exploit during this ballgame. Co-champions of the Big Ten, co-champions of the Pac-10, Iowa and Southern California. This should be fun. And Terry, the guys make the point about the quarterback. You can take that a step further. These two guys get it done differently as well. They, they sure do. They have different styles, different talents, but it got them where they wanted to go. You take Carson Palmer. He's an NFL-type quarterback. Too big, tall, strong arm, sits in the pocket, reads his receivers down, one, two, three. Brad Banks, on the other hand, he's got great legs as well as an arm. If you cover up his receivers, he's going to scramble and get an open down for you. Another question mark for Iowa. Remember, they haven't played right. since the middle of November. Earlier today here on ABC was the Capital One Bowl. Now, Penn State and Auburn meeting for only the second time, Terry, and I think Penn State has a one nothing lead because Joe Paul beat you. Yeah, that's unfortunately, you're right there. <laughs> All right, some turnovers here early on. Enough. Penn State ends up with a field goal, but Ronnie Brown, the difference maker for Auburn, this is the first of his two touchdowns. Well, everybody talked about Larry Johnson, the great running back for Penn State, but Ronnie Brown showed him up today, 184 yards rushing. 17 yards on this one. It's his second touchdown. They went for the two-point conversion, no good, but Penn State got the ball back a couple of times, Zach Mills didn't get the secondary 
shut them down also. Roderick Hood had that interception. You see the numbers, as Terry mentioned, on Brown. In the Gator, Notre Dame against NC State. Bad news early for the Irish. Carlisle Holiday goes to his right, gets hit, and his shoulder pops out. He did not return to the game. It was scoreless early. But then Phillip Rivers, little trickery here between <laughs> the legs, gives it to T.A. McClendon. He takes it in the three yards, 14-3. But this is where Rivers really can get you. It's his leadership and his ability to be pinpoint on his passing. He just kind of shovels this one. Well, he's smart. He knows the game. There he is, makes a shovel pass. He really understands defenses, and Notre Dame has not been able to keep their offense on the field to keep Rivers on the bench. He gets too many at-bats, too many times to throw the ball, just like that. To this one, Deshaun Burton covers seven yards. Rivers, 23 of 37, 228 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. So the Irish fin finish up 10-3. and three. Great season, and NC State finishes strong after stumbling late in the season. The Cotton Bowl for Texas, Chris Sims. He has not played well in this stadium against Oklahoma. So many bad memories, but today he goes 51 yards to Roy Williams. Williams picks up his first touchdown of the day. Yeah, Chris Sims finally got a touchdown pass in Dallas, but Roy Williams, the big man there, got great speed at the receiver position, but he also runs the ball well, also scored on a reverse for Texas. This is a very good LSU defense that they shut down and ran all over. 39 yards in this and around. Sims, though, finishes up his career 15 of 28 269 yards and a couple of touchdowns Cedric Benson also had one touchdown although just 46 yards rushing in the outback Michigan against Florida these two schools have never played hard to believe now following a Florida botch snap Chris Perry picks up his first touchdown of the game. And when I say first, you'll hear his name called a couple more times. Seven nothing, but Rex Grossman goes back to the air, 33 yards to Keywan Ratliff to keep Florida close. It's a 28-23 game, but again, too much Chris Perry and his four touchdowns. That's right. When Michigan runs the ball well, as Chris Perry, hit, Perry did here, they're going to win football games. And John Navarro, up and down throughout the season, had a great finish today. Even had a better day than Rex Grossman. you got to wonder if old Rex is going to turn pro now after the season. Chris Perry, 193 total yards in the four rushing touchdowns. That's an outback bowl record. John Navarre, 21-36, 319 yards in a touchdown and 48 career touchdown passes. He's number two all time at Michigan. We're going to take you back out to the Noka Sugar Bowl in just a moment from here in New York. Jimmy Kim alive. It looks as if Jimmy's been taking some snapshots of his own. Nokia gave me one of their 3650 camera phones and asked me to capture some of college football's most famous images to use in their halftime contest. But before we get to the contest, I thought I'd show some of my pictures that didn't quite make the cut. All right, that is Lee Corso, original member of the Village People. You heard of Touchdown Jesus? This is Touchdown Ralphie from St. Rita's College in Schenectady. This is, this is just embarrassing. And check this out, this is an instant classic. My cousin Sal with a peanut that I stuck in his mouth on the flight home from the Michigan-Wisconsin game. Now let's go down to the field and see how many photos our contestant can name for some big money. Yo, Rich. Yo, Jimmy. Rich Eisen with you here. How are you? Here on the goal line of Florida State University's end zone along with Steve Salerno of Fort Worth, Texas, who is about to play the Nokia Snapshot Jackpot, in which, by guessing correctly and identifying some of the more indelible images of college sports, you, Steve Salerno, can win up to $200,000. And here's how you can do it. You're going to be seeing images in three different categories. You're going to have 10 seconds in each category to correctly name the images in the category and the answers must be in the form of a university or a college like, say, oh, Tulane, all right? And here is how things are broken down monetarily. Each image in category number one is worth $5,000. Each image in category two, $10,000. Each image in category number three, $20,000. Are you ready, Steve Salerno of Fort Worth, Texas? I'm ready. All right, here we go, getting ready for the Nokia. Snapshot jackpot to win up to $200,000. Category number one, mascots. Are you ready, Steve? I'm ready. Okay, go. Ohio State. Correct. Colorado. Correct, all right. You're through, category number one. Way to go. You've got 10 grand, category two. Stadiums, are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Uh, 
UCLA. Correct. Texas A&M. Correct. Tennessee. Correct. Five for five. Perfect. How about that? $40,000 for you, Steve, going into category three, which is icons. Are you ready? Yes. And go. Alabama. Correct. Florida State. Correct. Notre Dame. Correct. You have now won $100,000. Let's hear it. Going into the money question. You guessed this correctly, you double your money, but we're gonna give you some help. You ready for the help? Ready. Joe Theismann is here. Round of applause for Joe Theismann. Joe. Thank you very much. Are you, are you ready, are you up, up for the challenge? I'm up for the challenge. I don't have to throw it through the phone this year. I can just use my mind. Okay. So here we go. Steve Salerno, Fort Worth, Texas. You get this correct. You can double your money and win $200,000. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. University of Miami Hurricanes. That is correct. $200,000 for Steve Salerno of Fort Worth, Texas. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Now here to present your big fat check from Nokia is Tim Eckersley. Tim. I'm sure Joe was a lot of help to you, Steve. Well, Steve, on behalf of the over 50,000 Nokia employees worldwide, I want to congratulate you and award you this check for $200,000. Congratulations. Steve. Uh, on behalf of my wife, Janice, and my daughter, Anna, we'd like to thank the uh, Nokia team for making this week so special. They did a great job. They were spectacular. Congratulations to Steve Salerno, Fort Worth, Texas, winner of $200,000. Back to you, Brad. All right, Rich, thanks for being along. Steve, congratulations. Check him out for maybe a loan. Halftime in New Orleans, ABC Sports presentation of college football. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This has been the Pontiac Performance Halftime Show, brought to you by Pontiac, fuel for the soul. We'll be back with the second half after this from our ABC stations. You're watching the Bowl Championship Series on ABC Sports as coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl continues. Back at the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Georgia. It's first trip here in 20 years. They lead by 10 at halftime. 17 to 7. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. I think the best long pass I've seen thrown all year was by Anquan Bolden. It was incomplete, or we'd have a closer score than we have right now. Same thing happened in the North Carolina State game. He dropped one there. He's caught a lot of big passes, but uh, Florida State needs to do the same thing in the second half they did this in the first half control the ball, keep their offense off the field. Just don't throw him an interception for a touchdown right. and catch the ones you got. The guy that did start a quarterback, Fabian Walker, sort of a mixed bag in what he's done so far. He's done some things pretty well. He's done some good things and some bad things. He's running. He got into the ball game by picking up a first down, moving around a little bit, ran for one. Now he's going to throw for a touchdown. The Bolden in the corner. The mistakes will kill you. And you, you cannot turn these things over. That's Thornton's 71-yard touchdown. That put Georgia in front to stay up to this point. And, you know, we talk about two quarterbacks. We knew we were going to see Georgia have two quarterbacks in there, too. And D.J. Shockley came in, and I said, you know, should we show the interception from the Florida game? You said, leave the kid alone. Let him get a play under his belt. This was the play. Yeah. But, you know, he's just, he's a lot of talent, and he's, you know, but if he plays, well, I said 20 plays. He plays two plays. He made up for it. <laughs> and, I'm, yes. and I'm glad that Mark Rick say, hey, go back in there and do it and take another drive. Yep. And, he, and he came out with some points. So. David Green, the starters, is good. We got the touchdown. So one play, 37 yards, yep. touchdown. We're going to see probably four quarterbacks in the second half, too. And uh, Anquan Bolden will have to check on him and his injury status. Right now, though, let's head down. Lynn Swan on the field. Swanee. Well, Brad, I think Anquan Bolden is going to play in the ball game. He just bruised that left hand. But Bobby Bowden said he's going to start the second half with Fabian Walker and see how he goes, although he intends to move Anquan Bolden in there. For his mindset, the difference in this ball game is big plays. You see Green make a big catch for 
Georgia, and then you see a drop pass by Tom and Gardner, and so it's very difficult for Florida State to be on top in this ball game. Defensively, he feels like his team is in this ball game 100%. What he's going to have to do, he said, is throw quicker passes in the second half with his offense because his offensive line is not protecting his quarterback as well as he'd like to see it done. Right. Brad? Yep, good point. All right, Swanee. You know, it's amazing, Bob. Swanee's been walking around New Orleans uh, the last three or four days with a goatee. And all of a sudden, I just realized he's clean shaven. Cleaned up, didn't he? He yeah. did clean up nice. Yeah. Must have been Chirina said, get rid of that thing before the game. Yeah. Uh -huh. Had a little salt and pepper working in it. That's probably why. But I could well, use it. Well, I, I could use my it. age a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm only 25. That's I could, right. I could use a telestrator and put it back on there for you. <laughs> Here's the kick. Georgia will get the football first. Gibson five yards deep, and he wants to bring it. So he will. Donova was a good choice. It wasn't. Uh, out to the seven yard line. That's all. Our PlayStation 2 halftime statistics look like this. Well, look at the number of plays big in favor of Florida State. Uh, touch, uh, turnovers. One of the two for Florida State went back for a touchdown. And of course, the thing we've been talking about, that just shows you time of possession doesn't have anything to right. do with score especially when you throw interceptions for touchdowns. Well you know Georgia was 10th in the SEC in time of possession. They were first in the SEC in scoring. Good point. They have never been a team to control the ball. They get the ball and they score and that's kind of the way Mark Rick was when he was at Florida State. Here's Musa Smith who's been a non-factor really so far. Musa trying to get it out across the 10 yard line. Got about five. Stanford Samuels made the stop. Georgia with their possessions in the first half. They got a field goal on a 62 yard drive to open things up and they missed a long one. Yeah. And of course, a fumble and touchdown. Yeah, that's only 10 points, but uh, the other one was scored by their defense right. on the interception. Seminole band and their fans trying to get them in it with a chant for their defense, having Georgia pinned inside its own 15. Smith again, this time into the secondary. And a good tough run, and you hear the chance of Moo from the Georgia fan. Musa Smith gets it out to the 24-yard line. Yeah, just, just the off, big offensive line. Watch this side of the offensive line, those guys up front. The senior, Breedlove, and the center. Knight, you know, they're going to lose this offensive line, so they better run right. behind it while they've got it. Because next year they're going to have to break in a whole new offensive line. First team All SEC performer, the first thousand yard rusher since Garrison Hurst in '92. And you think of Georgia, you think of Herschel and uh, those guys, you think every year they'd have a thousand, but it just hadn't happened. Of course, Terrell Davis uh, wasn't a thousand yard game right. there and was a late draft choice. Right. And, uh, Robert Edwards uh, right. now is back with the Dolphins, comeback player of the year, comeback story of the year, really, in right. the NFL. And that's Terrence Edwards' uh, big brother, Robert. But Musa, the first one in uh, 10, 11 years that's done the thousand yard thing. Here's the guy that caught the touchdown pass, closing in on all the SEC receiving records. That's Terrence Edwards. On second down. And here comes Smith again. And now big chunks. As Bob said, you get the big eaters up front, open them some holes, you might as well use them. And now Moose's got 67 yards. Take a look at the uh, the right side of that offensive line. That's Breedlove and Marshall over there on that side in the fullback wall doing a nice job. And Musa just gets through and says, hey, I'm eating the yardage up here. And he's got another first down at the 37 yard line. Tony Milton will come in and give him a breather now. So Georgia with a 10 point lead opening drive third quarter. Play fake green going deep. Got his man. Johnson inside the 30. Michael Johnson went up and got it. And he went up and got the biggest pass of the year for Georgia. This one nothing like the dramatics of the Auburn finish. Uh, a nice pass play. This is what the running game would do for you. Look out here on the outside. You got single coverage. Nobody helping you in the middle of the field. If he would have put the ball out a little bit further, he could have got it maybe a touchdown. There's Green laying it out beautifully. So first down at the 29. Back to the ground. 
Milton, nice sidestep. And Tony Milton inside the 25 down to the 24. Michael Johnson, I mentioned the junior out of Tulsa, made the catch turn around the SEC, especially for the Georgia Bulldogs this year. Waiting moments, fourth down, fourth and long. Had to have it to get an SEC championship, and with 19 seconds went up and caught a fourth down touchdown pass. Probably the biggest play for Georgia this year and in many seasons. Johnson probably the number four receiver on this team. Three of the four receivers will be back next year. That'll be good for the for the dogs. Green whips it out intended for Terrence Edwards incomplete coverage by Leroy Smith out there on the corner. And it'll bring up third down at five. Now that's the kind of uh, interaction you like to see. Good sportsmanship. Good play by both guys. Florida State, of course, only three years removed from when that man was offensive coordinator, playing in the national championship game against Michael Vick and Virginia Tech. And now, not that many seasons have passed. Marks finishing off his second year as a head coach at Georgia. Bobby Bowden's just a few wins behind Joe Paterno on the all-time list. Draw play on third and five. It didn't work. As they lost a yard. Alonzo Jackson was the first to meet Tony Milton. And that will bring out the Georgia field goal unit again. Billy Bennett's one out of two. He hit one to open the scoring and then missed a 47 yarder. As we said, 23 field goals on the season is a school record. Kevin Butler considered probably the best kicker Georgia's ever had. Really a heck of an NFL kicker, too. This guy's got 23 on the season, going for number 24. He's got 53 on his career. That's, and he's still got another year to, to go. 42-yard kick here on the way, and this one's true. Right down the Nokia phone. That's been good from 60. Beautiful kick by Bennett. Tax three more on for Mark Rick's dogs. 11.06 to go third quarter. Georgia 20-7. Billy Bennett alone in the record books. Kevin Butler kicked 23 field goals for Georgia in 1984. Billy just hit his 24th of the year. New single season school record. He's closing in on the single season scoring record, too. We mentioned Garrison Hurst earlier, and Garrison Hurst did a single season at 126 points. And with his performance here today, Billy's up to 124. And here's his counterpart, the other kicker, Brett Kerouac. I gave him a little grief before the game. I yelled Duluth Wildcats at him, and he turned his head completely around. A senior out of Duluth, Georgia, which is my hometown. Uh huh. Gardner and Washington deep. Hero axe kick. A good one again. Deep. Two yards in. Tallman Gardner won't bring it out. That's a nice weapon to have to have a kicker as accurate as Bennett, one that can kick it in the end zone on kickoffs. The Noel fans are trying. They're trying to chop their way back in this thing. ABC's wild card Saturday starts with a showdown between two of the NBA's brightest stars, Dirk Nowitzki of Dallas and Allen Iverson of the Sixers, followed by our NFL wild card doubleheader. Wild card Saturday gets underway at 1 o'clock Eastern. It's part of a week of great events on ABC Sports Championship Television. Bill Walton, Dave Aldridge, and I'll start things off from Dallas. And then we'll move on from the NBA to the NFL. Fabian Walker at quarterback, Florida State from its own 20. And Walker, straight drop to throw, and pressure on the ball is loose. And Georgia's got it. Another mistake. Ken Veal with a fumble recovery. I think it was Will Thompson that got him from the backside, and for Thompson, He's wreaking more havoc than Pollock is You're in right. that Florida State backfield. This Georgia defense is really getting after it. Luck over here. He's just going to beat the tackle on that side. That was Thompson. Right there, when, when, you, when you rush a passer from his backside, you have a great opportunity to knock the ball loose. And more and more guys, coaching staffs, are teaching that if you come up from behind, Try to knock the ball, strip it, as well as get the sack. Thompson, three sacks. Walker, three turnovers. Georgia in the red zone again, courtesy of a turnover. Will they go for the quick strike? Green fires. 
It was pulled back out of the backfield and Wall got to about the 15 yard line, maybe the 14. Michael Bolware made the tackle. Florida State had done a nice job in recent weeks of holding on to the football. They were plus 13 in turnover margin, which was tied for second best in the ACC. But today, it's uh, the yeah. wheels are coming off. Well, and they had one turnover the last four games. And tonight, with the young quarterback in there, he's been responsible for two interceptions, and then he just got stripped on the fumble. Second down and seven. To Smith. No gain on that play. So Kendall Pope and uh, Bolware, they make the last two plays. And Smith, who started this third quarter so strong, when Georgia had to begin this drive inside their own 10 yard line. And the Seminoles returned 10 of their defensive players. If you look at Thompson and Pollock, two of the defensive ends. Uh, Pollock has probably gotten a lot of the attention this year, being the defensive player of the year, player of the year in the yep. SEC. Thompson uh, having a good game tonight. Third down and seven now. Green from the gun. Georgia trying to capitalize on the fumble recovery. Here comes a blitz. Green down the middle. Got his man. It's going to be short of the first down, I think. Gibson made the catch. Tough one over the middle. But on third and seven, I think he only got about six. Let's wait and see. And now the fans already coming to life, thinking about going on fourth down, and Mark Rick didn't even think twice. He no. said, get number 30 out there, see if he can get his 25th field goal of the year. He wants to get something positive out of this turnover. You know, that's one of the things an offensive coordinator doesn't have to do, make these decisions. Do I go for it on fourth down? Do I kick the field goal? Do I punt the ball? Do I go for it? Billy Bennett will become a single season scoring leader in Georgia history if this 25 yarder goes through, and it does. Three field goals for Bennett. Georgia does capitalize on the turnover. And with 8.49 remaining in the third quarter, the Bulldogs add to their lead. Georgia 23, Florida State 7. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by the easy to use Nokia 3650 camera phone. Nokia connecting people. The new BMW Z4 Roadster, the ultimate driving machine. PlayStation 2. And Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold down easy. Georgia making the most of its first trip to New Orleans in two decades. They lead 23 to 7 in the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl. And there's a big reason why Will Thompson has been something else off his defensive end spot. Probably the most overlooked guy on their defensive front. And he's wreaked havoc in the Florida State backfield. Helped them with that forced fumble on the sack of Fabian Walker to get Bennett's 25 yard field goal. impressed with University of Georgia. They've done it on offense and done it on defense. Turnovers. Special teams, the kickers have both been good. Kerouac again knocks it down for a touchback five yards deep and forces Florida State again to have to work from its own 20 yard line. The other thing I'm impressed with are the co is the coaching staff coming out second half. The, the first three possessions uh, Georgia has has taken it away once and they gotten two field goals out of it. So their halftime changes and corrections have worked whereas Florida State's has not. We have not seen Anquan Bolden as a receiver or a quarterback so far in this third quarter that is halfway gone. Nine possessions for Florida State four of their starts were at their own 20 or worse. And this one is at the 20 again. Let's see if Georgia keeps bringing that pressure on Walker. We expected it. We got it. And here, the run defense. Pollock made the first hit. Gilbert cleaned up. And there's Anquan Bolden, and he has some tape now on the left wrist and hand area he didn't have when the game started. There he goes. And here he comes. Daryl Dickey sends him out. And he comes in in this situation as a receiver. Second down 11. Bolden one of three wideouts. 
from the 19 yard line. The give is to Washington and Leon finally found a little room to run. And he's got a first down as he pops it out across the 35 17 yard gain. Leon the guy that had the good game against Florida Gators. Offensive line doing a nice job. The fullback gets his piece. It's a two deep zone, so there's only seven guys up to stop the run. Tell you, Florida State's got some good freshman running backs. This kid, Leon Washington, they've played Clayton this year. Mm -hmm. They're not even playing that kid, uh, Lorenzo Booker, the number one recruit last year out of high school. He's being redshirted. Greg Jones, of course, their, their approach was kind of dismantled when he went down in the injury to Wake Forest. Greg was playing so well, and I mentioned earlier that the game he had when we had him against Miami, despite the fact they missed uh, the field goal that uh, could have upset the defending national champions, Greg Jones was nothing short of sensational in that game, and, and we hope his rehab is going well. Well, they'll get him back next year, and then uh, Chris Ricks will be back next year, and uh, that, that's, that goes a long way towards making this offense very uh, explosive. They'll have some good receivers back. Bolden will be back. Some of the young guys. Second down and seven. And the give again. Washington maybe to the 41-yard line. Greg Jones, who was the ACC's leading rusher up until the Wake Forest game. And here's Greg from his tailback spot. In Winston-Salem, watch the right leg plant, and that knee isn't supposed to go that way, at least not that far. And, you know, and we talked about this earlier, and, and the problem with that is he wasn't hit at all, and I think sometimes there's too much weight training, there's too much off-season conditioning. The legs, you build up the thighs and the calves and the joint, the knee just can't take those sharp cuts sometimes, and guys injure themselves without even getting hit. There's Greg on the sideline watching as Georgia takes a timeout with 619 remaining. In the third quarter, Bulldogs leading the Seminoles 23-7. That's not a banner, folks. That's midfield. 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl. We look down from atop the Superdome with Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan. I'm Brad Nestler. Nice to have you along with us, and a happy new year to all of you. 6-19 remaining third quarter, and it's third down and five, and every third down becomes important for Florida State if they're going to get back in the game. Georgia showing blitz, and they're bringing it. Walker, flags are down. They'll stop the play before it begins. Georgia saying they were drawn offside. Let's see if Chuck McFerrin agrees. Dead ball, illegal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Probably jerked the ball and didn't snap it, trying to pull that guy everybody off. So it becomes third and ten. The third quarter has belonged to Georgia. Musa Smith first got things going. Back to back first down runs. Got him headed in the right direction, but then it was a defense. Will Thompson, his third sack of the day, forced to fumble. Veal with a recovery. Set up Bennett's field goal. One of two in his 25th of his career. And that's where we stand 23 to 7. Fifth time, third down and 10 or more. That's not good. Nope. As you would say, I don't like that. I don't like that. Flaring it out, incomplete, intended for Thomas Clayton. Yeah, not against an aggressive Bulldog defense. I really like this attacking defense. Nine guys off this defense is back next year for Georgia, so they lose their two middle linebackers, Bailey and Gilbert, but the rest of them, they'll be back. There's a little touch. Pollock let Walker know that he was there. And now Damian Gary drops back in punt return formation, waiting on Chance Gwaltney's kick. Georgia has the return set on Gwaltney, bombs this one. These are the kind you run back. Yep. At the 15, but nice coverage as well. Good job downfield by Pat Watkins to make the tackle. Of course, Georgia and Florida State both had a long gap in between the end of the regular season and this bowl game. We talked to Mark Rick about that problem. Momentum may have been halted. You know, you just don't know. It's a long time. You know, you play that game against Arkansas, and then you, you get uh, some days off for final exams, and then you go back to practice. And we had a great practice session. But then you go Christmas break, 
and uh, you lose a little bit there and you come back to the bowl site now there's all kind of distractions here at the bowl site you know are we are we going to be able to click like we've been uh, the last two games it, it'd be uh, it'd be nice but I'm not betting on it that's a pretty honest answer not yeah. betting on it uh, a couple of things he said distractions at the bowl site I think they're they're good distractions oh yeah positive ones. they're yeah. positive distractions and then the other thing is he was with Bobby for so long and Bowden and Florida State won a lot of bowl games in a row they were I think they won like 14 in a row or something before they'd lost one uh, so he knows what 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 Bobby has done over the years and how to get him ready to, to play a bowl game and you're, you're off. And the main thing is you got to get him in shape back in shape. Not so easy to do after some of mom's cooking sometimes Smith trying to find a handle on the pitch and does and Usa. He might have a first down going to be awful close anyway. Nice run Kyler Hall knocked him off his pins but he got ahead of steam and got it going. Mark Richt just got a new contract although the ink isn't dry on it that extends him through 2010 makes him one of the highest paid coaches in football in college football that is. And I said to him the other day hey man I need a loan he said I haven't seen any of it yet. <laughs> he's he's quite a young guy though very calm and cool and collected and uh, admitted guy. admitted openly last year in his first season that he made some dumb calls he said you know I got to go back and he was very honest and you know how the talk shows are and the folks in Georgia said hey he admitted he was wrong yep. and uh, yep. he's made the right calls this year a lot of times on fourth downs big plays. And it's uh, worked out to the tune of 12 wins and they can become the first Georgia team ever to win 13 games if they win this game tonight and they're 20 minutes away from it. I was talking to him and I said you know next year they're going to expect more. What are you going to do? He yeah. said, no he says they're good fans. He says our <laughs> fans are good. Our alumni are good. They just they take you know they take it uh, uh, in stride and uh, he said they, they won't expect any more. I'll tell you what they'll expect. They'll expect them to be back in the Superdome next year. Shockley on a rollout and Alonzo Jackson. Takes him down. About the only thing that, that that Mark Rick has not done is beaten the University of Florida. They've beaten Tennessee. They've won the championship, and uh, that's one one thing that Georgia needs to get over is beating the University of Florida. I think they've beaten them one time yeah. in the last uh, 12 or 13 years. Jim Donovan, I guess, did it once. I don't know if Ray Goff ever did it. Of course, Vince Dooley had Florida's number, and then when Steve Spurrier came in, and yeah. Georgia had so many coaching changes kind of mixed in there, and they couldn't. Couldn't get Steve's number. Yep. And he let everybody know that. <laughs> He's still doing that in the pros. <laughs> he said he wanted to make the Cowboys the Georgia Bulldogs of the NFL. Lisa Smith across the 30 out to about the 31. Bullwear in on the stop as well. Beginning Super Bowl Sunday late nights have a new player Jimmy Kimmel. Until then, Jimmy hits the streets to get a little practice. Jimmy Kimmel Live, late night starting Super Bowl Sunday on ABC. Three and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Third down and seven. George has missed on its last five third down conversions. Shockley again at quarterback has a touchdown throw today and off play action wants to throw here. He won't get time. Sacked again. Alonzo Jackson third time Shockley and Georgia's quarterbacks have gone down. Remember Alonzo's the Georgia native and he's dancing his way to the sideline. He's been waiting for this one. Oh yeah. Alonzo Jackson uh, one of the you know he plays like the defensive ends from Florida State in days uh, gone by. Uh, number 48 getting the sack. Coming in Georgia said this kid is as good as those other guys and uh, of course Rick being there he knew it. Punting situation now for Kilgo. Jonathan inside his own 10 Florida State trying to pressure him and did they hit him. No flag comes out on the other end. Leon Washington on the punt return gets by the first man and goes down at the 34 yard line. Very close to being a running into the kicker penalty but no flags fly. 55 yard punt 23 to 7 229 left third quarter. The man that scored Florida State's only touchdown as a receiver is back in at quarterback. Anquan Bolden. The gloves are off. Where's gloves when he plays? He's dropped the gloves. <laughs> Wide receiver wears the gloves. And a roll on first down and throw completes at the 40-yard line. Knee went down. 
of Tallman Gardner. And Tallman Gardner caught that one, but the one that got away could have made it a three-point ball game at halftime. Watch the arm strength on Anquan Bolden as he was going deep late in the second quarter. Let's see, throws it from the 40. Right from the 40. Now watch this end, and Gardner. Oh, Ooh, about 58 yards, and as you said, with the angle, it's farther than that. Right. That would have been a would have been a big play for Florida State to hit. That would have made it 17-14 at halftime. Holden. UK Sam. Sam's got John Jones draped all over. But it'll be close to a first down. Yep. Florida State trying to chip away with a guy that uh, was everybody's all ACC performer at wide receiver. And while Fabian had a couple of mediocre hits in the 60s. This Fabian's had kind of a sour tune tonight, I'm afraid. Yeah. And the key is the three turnovers, and one of them was returned for a touchdown, which is which is something you really never want. You like those songs by Fabian, didn't you? Yeah, I like Fabian. It's back in my era. He's a terrible actor, though. He. <laughs> I just saw one of those surf movies the other night. That guy was <laughs> awful. <laughs> he was in a John Wayne movie one time. I said, Duke ought to just kick him right out of the saddle. Get him out of here. <laughs> Bolden might get a first down on the quarterback sneak. I think he does. I just had to get that off my chest. Yeah, you felt you, know. you, you must feel better here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, been a tough I've, week in the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen that movie. <laughs> You're not missing anything. <laughs> Minute left in the third quarter. Uh, first down, Florida State. You know, both these teams played really tough schedules. Florida State played the third toughest schedule, and they have 11 of their opponents are going to bowl games, played in bowl games. So. Tough schedule. 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They're going to get the playoff. No. Look like it. Sometimes when you don't play quarterback a lot, you forget about looking at the end of the field where the clock is right there. It's very easy for a quarterback to play see it. On the offense, but sometimes you just penalty. forget about it. Especially Still when your guy's down. used to just walking in the huddle and say, what's my pass pattern? Or I have to block somebody and then run it out of there. Yeah, it's right here. So when the quarterback comes up to the line of scrimmage, all he has to do is look right there. But uh, sometimes when, like you say, you know, you're not used to being in control, you know. And having the ball every snap. Yeah. Quarterback is in control. Anquan's done a good job in two different spots. First down at 15 now after the five yard walk off. Play action for Bolden. He's going to take off with it. Looking for a block. Ran right, right by a couple of tacklers. Goes far side. has got a first down. What a run. He's an athlete. Yes, he is. I, it, you just got to get the ball in his hands. And he was going. When you run all the way across field, you're looking for big things. He could have run up straight up ahead. He wouldn't have gotten as much, but he was trying to make big things happen. He ran right by Thomas Clayton, who didn't throw a block for him. Watch number 31 come into your screen. I oh, know it wasn't 31. It was Salvidio, the fullback. And kind of a Seneca Wallace look to it. Remember yeah. His touchdown run where he yeah. went all over the place. Back and forth, across, and up. First down at the 40 yard line. Bolden play action, wants it all. There we go. Going deep again. Ford pulled it down, touchdown. Crafonzo Ford. And Anquan Bolden's caught one and he's thrown one. That's how you end the third quarter. Get your team right back in the football game. And Touchdown pass. Thorpe is 6-2. Brian is 5-11. Not much of a difference, but he just out jumped him. Just throw the ball up one on one and let us make a play on it. And going for two points here. 23 to 13. It's a 10 point game. They're trying to get it to eight. So Anquan Bolden, that was not as good a pass as the one that. Tallman Gardner had a shot at before halftime, but he'll take it. This one had a better result. Touchdown. He stays in there at quarterback, going for two in the shotgun. Quarterback draw? Could be. Oh, no, you got too many guys. You got a lot of guys in here. Back to throw, buying some time. Now comes the pressure from Georgia. He does try to run for it. Oh, boy, took a big shot in the head. 
Chris Clemens said, you come my way, you're going to have to get hit. Clemens has a number 48 on, but he's a linebacker. Yes, he is. He said, you ain't running over me. He's a 237-pound linebacker who just knocked him out of bounds and prevented the two-point conversion. But as the third quarter came to a close, it was bold into Thorpe. Touchdown. Florida State's back in it. And Anquan has been the number one man for Florida State tonight. Greg Jones, the injured back, looking on. His knolls are back in it. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hug is happy after three quarters is Bulldogs 23-13. That's August 6. How can you tell he's happy? Well, he got that same look on his face pretty much all the time, but if I was treated as well as he is around the state of Georgia, I'd be happy. Uh, he sits on that ice. You know, yeah, I know. Keeps, keeps cool. He's a third-year junior out of Savannah, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a red shirt. No, he's not a red shirt. <laughs> he's a junior. Uh, here's a kid. Gibson, about seven yards deep, and he'll take a knee. Hugga uh, six. There's his ice. Yeah, he keeps that bag on. He's the heaviest one ever. <laughs> His kennel is air conditioned and his his favorite food is turkey. Now we got a yellow lab. <laughs> it weighs 80 pounds and is a lot bigger than Hug. Hug is actually in his fourth year and uh, they had the pregame passing of the bone ceremony from his daddy back in 99. The, the Siler family down in Savannah uh, have, uh, had many of the Uggas uh, come to Georgia. That's part of what's great about college football. You know, I love the Colorado. The uh, the Buffalo. Yeah, Ralphie. Ralphie and Hugga. Bevo. Come on, those are a couple of yeah. yeah. Well, he, you know, Florida Hugga's, State, Florida State horse. Yep, Hugga's always do a nice job matriculating there in Athens. It's a good place for a dog to be on weekends and then you go down to Savannah, you know, get a little bit of the Savannah life. <laughs> Shady trees, <laughs> nice old mansions. <laughs> I knew we were in trouble with you doing this game, a Georgia game, when you were growing up in Duluth and knowing everything about Georgia. <laughs> so that's second down at 12. Georgia trying to hold on to a 10 point lead. Houston Smith holding to the 20. Nice job defensively, only got a couple of yards. As A.J. Nicholson, freshman linebacker, knocked him off his pins. Florida State, only 10 down now after that touchdown. Have they gotten that two-point conversion? Would have really been big, but if, if they, they stop have, this. Exactly. If they can stop them here. Now, what Georgia wants to do is just keep the ball. They don't have to score, but they need to keep the ball five, six, seven minutes, move it down, and then back uh, Florida State up back uh, in their own territory. But uh, Florida State's trying to turn this game around right here. Their defense trying to get the crowd into it. They do try to get... The Seminole chant going here against the dogs offense. Green the throw. Edwards. That might quiet him. He's got a first down. That's just class right there. Another catch by Terrence Edwards, his third of the night. He's got a touchdown catch. You see single coverage out here. Your man Edwards is better than their man Smith. And the ball is right there when it should be there. When he breaks, the ball is there. So first down across the 30 at the 31. Back to the ground game. And now Smith taking would be tacklers with him out of bounds. They barely got him down over there in front of the Georgia bench. Kendall Pope finally riding him out with Bowler. There's Mickey Andrews, longtime defensive coordinator, and of course Mark Rick, the uh, Georgia head coach now, but for so many years the offensive coordinator at Florida State. A lot of spring practices where those two minds were working against each other. Good friends. You know, when Florida State lost Mark Rick, they not only lost an offensive coordinator, they lost a quarterback coach. Mm -hmm. Had to replace him with two guys. And remember Chuck D'Amato left that same time too, and uh, what he's done. At North Carolina State, they won a, their 11th game today. First time in school history, NC State's won 11 games as they went throttled Notre Dame. And so, uh, so let's go back and think. You know, Florida State 
They've lost, uh, they've been down a little bit the last couple of years. They've lost two pretty good coaches yeah. that have shown up in North Carolina State and Georgia. Bobby, 73 years young, says this week he wouldn't mind coach until he was 80, but he said, I can't guarantee that because uh, the big guy upstairs will dictate how long I coach. Well, he really, he, Bobby is, is a hands off. He lets his coaches coach. That's why he has to have good assistant coaches to go out. You know, he coaches the coaches and said, then right. go out and coach the players. 12 27 remaining in the ball game. His Florida State team down to Georgia by 10. for the national championship, the number one Hurricanes, the number two Buckeyes, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Friday night, 8 Eastern on ABC. And here the Nokia Sugar Bowl, a 10-point Georgia lead, 12-27 to go. Huge play right here on third and two for the Florida State defense. They need a stop, and they know it. The toss, Musa Smith with a convoy in front. He got the corner and more. First down, Bulldogs. Kendall Polk ran him out of bounds, but the big fella rumbled out. I'm impressed. First. Impressed with Musa Smith. Now, we don't get to see Georgia very often during the season, hardly at all. Watch from the end zone from behind the defense. It's just going to be a toss. We've seen him run up inside with the power gate. Now he's got the speed to get around the corner and pick up a first down. You know, when you do that, you take a chance on losing yardage, but. Um, with Musa, they know they can get it. He got the first, and the clock running down near the 12-minute mark. Here he is again, and he got another hole. Musa Smith, all the way down to the 23-yard line, and that puts him over 100 yet again on the season 900-yard-plus game. This is a big back. He's 6'2 and 225 pounds, and again. At blocking up front, 49 wall, the fullback doing the key block. It's just, I mean, you, you, you know, this we mentioned this is the best offense in the SEC, and they can run the football, they can throw it, and they've got an, a line up front that just, you know, sets both uh, both of them up. Play action, Green going to the end zone, and almost intercepted. Close to being picked off by Bryant McFadden. It's the balance of Georgia's offense that uh, seems to be so good. And here it is again as they go right back trying to get to the end zone through the air. Well, this is who wants it the most right here. Michael Johnson had his left hand on it. McFadden yeah, had both hands on almost it. Almost had it. Mm -hmm. Now, that would be pretty difficult for the wide receiver to jump up and catch that ball, boys, yeah. because uh, just too far over his head. That was, you have to be seven feet tall to jump up and get that one. You have to be a Fred Gibson type catch. Milton. And Tony got to the 21 yard line. Giving Lisa Smith a little bit of a breather. Milton, an amazing story. Uh, kind of a strange family life growing up. Just didn't spend that much time at home. There was a time even when he couldn't make the grades to be in college football that he had a job where a doctor gave him an SAT booklet as he worked his way back into college he was living in his car at one time he had a car and that's all he had so he stayed in the car Mark Rick remembered recruiting him a long time ago he said coach you have any place for me he said what position you want to play and he said I just want to contribute and uh, he is one of Mark Rick's favorite players and he's a kid that's come through a lot of adversity his family denies some of the things that he says about his parents when he was growing up, but uh, it's been a, a tough go for him. Well, well, Brad, when he was nine years old, he and one of his older brothers saw his sister uh, being spanked, and he refers to it as a beating, and they ran away from home uh, for more than a couple of months. And he said from that moment on, for long periods of time, he just spent away from home. and. Thank God for other people who intervened. Yep, and now he's on course to graduate as Billy Bennett knocks in another field goal. And Georgia has a 13-point lead, so Florida State knows they have their work cut out for them. They need a couple of touchdowns. 26-13.
the Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by the easy to use Nokia 3650 camera phone. Nokia, connecting people. Discover card, it pays to discover. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. And Miller Lite, life is best told at a place called Miller Time. That street looked like a bunch of red and black ants last night, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you, they were packed in like sardines. I wasn't down there <laughs> at New Year's, but I heard about it. Yeah, you heard about it? <laughs> yeah, I heard about it. You sent some scouts out, didn't you? I heard about it. Uh-huh. Well, there's a lot of red and black in this building. I'd say it's probably about a four to one ratio on Georgia fans to Florida State fans, and they have had reason to cheer as their team is in front by 13. Trying to win the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl. This is a big deal for the University of Georgia. Florida State in past years, as we mentioned, had one streak had played in the champion national championship game four out of five years yep. in the late 90s. Georgia has not played in a in the Sugar Bowl in quite a while, not have not won the SEC championship in a while. What a year droughts. Kerouac again knocks it in the end zone, and Florida State can't bring it out. Uh, Nokia best connection of the ball game. Here's right, a look right down here on the right side. Alfonso Thorpe taking the ball up and away from the Corey Bryant. And that's what you have to do sometimes. You, the skill is out. Just throw it up and let your guy make a play. And he did. And at that point they went for two point conversion to try to make it an eight point ball game. Didn't get it. Georgia goes down, gets another field goal, and now Florida State needs a couple touchdowns. And only 10 minutes left to try to get it. And one play action for him. Fires down the middle. Nice strike there. And another first down. Out across the 35, out to the 38 yard line of Robert Morgan. Morgan's first catch, and another guy that had to come back from an injury of a year ago that kept him out all season. Yep. So the two wide receivers that would have been starters last year both injured and here they hook up one wide receiver to the other. Looking up. One of the other things that is so good about this Georgia defense is that. And the team really the special teams is Florida State has had four possessions in the second half and three of them have started at their 20 yard line or worse. It's just good football that doesn't show up in the numbers. Maddox on a toss, and Nick Maddox with his best run probably of the night, run out of bounds after picking up 12 and getting another first down. Sean Jones runs out of bounds. And Quan Bolden, what a performance. Here was the first touchdown of the ball game. That pass from Walker, good for a touchdown. Then as a quarterback, the long cross country scramble it took him from one sideline to the other and then the pass that Bob was talking about a moment ago to Grafonzo Thorpe so he's thrown one and passed for one and that, that doesn't happen very often not when you catch one and throw one sometimes it happens when quarterbacks do that quarterback throwback uh, swing it out of the back but very seldom from a normally a wide receiver to playing quarterback and catching one and throwing one. Maddox weaving his way Got about eight yards, and Florida State not dead yet. Nine and a half to play. Wait a minute. Now they're, they're uh, now Georgia may be wishful thinking. They're pointing the other direction like it was a fumble, but the officials coming in and saying no way. Yep. So Bob and Brad, you talked earlier about Antoine Bolden coming back from knee surgery. He also received from the ACC the Brian Piccolo Award for having the most courage coming back so strongly from that particular award. And I think what we're seeing on the offense here is a demonstration of his leadership ability. Everybody is responding so well to him. Yeah, absolutely. And time out on the field with a second down and two coming up. Florida State trailing by 13. Seems like Georgia has the game in control, but Florida State's a touchdown here. It's and kinda, it could change the complexion of things. Kind of hanging around. Georgia kicking a lot of field goals. Second down and two for the Knowles at the Bulldog 42 yard line. And it's Maddox. And he's got the first down inside the 40. So they'll move the sticks again. And we're under nine minutes for the ball game. Well, 
take a look at the, 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 the last, the first four years of the BCS, uh, the champions have come from four different conferences. The Big Ten has not won a Big Ten championship uh, since 97. Ohio State's got a chance to do that Friday night. Antoine Bailey getting swarmed under by the dogs' defense here. Boss Bailey came in on the blitz. Fourth sack for Georgia tonight. And now it's going to be a second down and long situation. That's a big sack for Champ Bailey, guys, because for a while before this series, he was out of the ball game. They thought he may not go back in because of the sprain in his left ankle. Well, I guess he decided his team needed him, got it up, and went back into the ball game. Just like a wide receiver yeah. to think about a defensive back, call him champ, champ. Of boss. Uh -huh. yeah. Such the boss. <laughs> He's worried about, Sorry about that. He's, you're worried about champ. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, 17. Bolden wanted to run an option. Now he just keeps it, does what he can, weaving in and out of traffic, and he gets down to the 36-yard line. Curry brought him down, but a nice dance by Anquan to get some of that lost yardage from the sack back. Bobby said, now, what do you got now? You got any special plays up there? What about those, uh, what about that double pass we worked on? Uh, that looked pretty good. What about the option with Anquan? Yep. Well, Daddy, I don't know, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> if he calls a good play, he's Bobby's son. If he calls a bad one, he's yeah. a mama's boy. That's what Bobby said. Daddy can call anything he wants, anytime. That's right. Third down, long six. Bolden flips it out. Maddox almost had his head taken off by Thornton. Uh, see, that's that's the inexperience oh, of a, a quarterback that plays wide receiver all the time. I mean, because they were in double zone. There was a defensive back right out there where the receiver was running, and there was a guy there. That, that was uh, similar to the pass that Fabian Walker had picked off right. by, the, by a Thornton and ran back for a touchdown. Florida State wants to talk about what they want to do here. I'm sure they're going to go for it on fourth down and six, but they do call a timeout. Fans know this is probably the ball game if they can stop Florida State on fourth down. Florida State 0 for 1 on their fourth down conversions. It was a quarterback draw by Bolden. Remember in the first series they didn't get it and turned it over on downs. He needs fourth and six here. Scrambling for his life. Pollock giving chase. Bolden in the open field. He's not going to get there. You just can't take a wide receiver, put him at quarterback, and expect him to know all the nuances of the position. There was no way that he was going to pick up the needed yardage when you had three guys there. He had to throw it to somebody. It was Pollock who gave him the heat in the backfield that flushed him, and Pollock stayed with it to help on the tackle. Pollock never lets up. The, the engine is always running with him. Then Bob and Brad, the couple, the fact they have a receiver playing at quarterback, but in addition, now you take out your best receiver. That's right. That's in terms a good of point. running routes and getting over. Exactly. You're losing twice on that deal. Yeah. So Georgia takes over on downs. And just under seven minutes left. They'll keep it on the ground. Smith up to the 35, picked up about three. Tomorrow night, don't miss a battle between two of the nation's top quarterbacks. The guy that won the Heisman, Carson Palmer, and USC. The guy that finished second to him was Brad Banks, the leader of the Iowa team that hasn't played since about uh, Halloween. We'll see how their rust is tomorrow night. Should be a good game, though. FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. The Bowl Championship Series continues on ABC Sports Championship Television. Good numbers for Musa. You know, USC is one of the hottest teams in the country at the end of the season. Yep. But, yeah, I think a lot of people may uh, look past uh, you know, Iowa Hawkeyes. They, they're pretty good football team. Kidding around. Iowa last played on what, November 16th? Was that what it was? Yeah, I believe. They, they finished early. Yep. Well, great job by Kurt Ferentz. Uh, turned that program around. Carroll did a great job with the uh, USC. Third I'm down. Just, just looking forward to watching two good quarterbacks. You bet. Third down in a yard. Florida State needs a stop again. Needs a turnover. And Wall runs into a Seminole Wall. I don't 
think he got it, but maybe. A.T. Wall, the fullback. Out of Milledgeville, Georgia. And they're going to have to bring the change out, I think, for this one. I don't think he got it, but uh, we'll wait and see. 521, clock stopped. Georgia leading 26 13. Seminoles try to win their 10th game of the season. But right now, it looks like Georgia on the way to their 13th. Georgia in the top five for the first time since 83. Hey, they're in the top three. And as we mentioned earlier, just one little stumble, they could have been in, in the Fiesta Bowl in the championship game. Lost to Florida, 20 to 13. They won a lot of close games this year, the Bulldogs did, and they lost a close one to Florida. Penalty marker down as Georgia lets the clock wind down to the 453 mark. And with a delay of game, now they'll bring out the punting unit. So they wanted to use as much clock as possible. And that'll bring out Jonathan Kilgo to kick momentarily. Leon Washington will go back for Bobby Bob and Seminoles. Georgia is out of timeouts, by the way, too, just in case Florida State should they do something to get back in the game. And Florida State has two of its timeouts remaining in this half. And they got decent pressure, but nice punt. Washington waits on it at the 19-yard line. And gets out of bounds after he gets what he can, which is out to about the 33-yard line. Florida State back on offense. They need touchdowns. They trail by 13. You're watching ABC's coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And 442 remaining in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan with you from New Orleans. Georgia in command. Florida State still with a chance, though, but time is running out. Time's running out on Anquan Boulder. Is in that pocket. He's just not comfortable because Georgia has made him uncomfortable. Thomas Davis, his second sack of the game. Davis just cannot be blocked by a back. They've got a back trying to block him. Davis is big as a linebacker. He just uh, just running right over the back. Five sacks allowed a season high allowed by Florida State. That Georgia pressure. Their defense has given a lot of guys headaches this year. Bottom line is if your offense is being run the quarterback by a wide receiver they're not going to beat a team like Georgia. Holding, dancing around, doing what he can. Got back near the original line of scrimmage. Tim Jennings knocked him off his pins. We're under four minutes. Swanee? Well, Bob and Brad, there's one story I think is maybe the best story in college football, and that's around number 79, Todd Williams. Abandoned by his mother when he was nine years old, raised by his grandmother. She passed away when he was 15, and he was homeless. In 1994, he said he was getting ready to steal some money out of a house when he saw Florida State playing in the national championship game. And he thought to himself, why can't I be like those football players and something good happen to me? He got some help along the way. Higgins, the offensive line coach, saw him playing and wanted to give him a scholarship. And he went to him and watched him play at high school, came back, talked to Bobby Bowden. They offered him a scholarship. He came to Florida State to play football. This last December, he graduated from Florida State, not just with one degree, but two degrees, one in sociology and one in uh, criminology. And so he is just a phenomenal story of the determination and when a couple of people look at a young man and decide to help him and help him help himself, what a success story he can be. Boy, no doubt about that. And he's become a heck of a player in a 300 and almost 30 pounder. He's been one of the anchors on that offensive front for Bobby Bowden. And now Florida State's got to give it up. Punting time, fourth down. And a nice kick. Fair catch taken back inside the 15 yard line by Sean Jones. 
is our Dodge defensive playbook in this one. I'll show you what some of these defensive coordinators, these schemers come up with. A <laughs> linebacker right here, another linebacker right here. They're both going to blitz to the outside. Watch him come. They both blitz outside. Now both of the backs, these two guys in the white shirts, are going to block the guy, the outside guy, leaving this one inside here, the delay guy, coming in to blitz and sack the quarterback. When both linebackers don't blitz right away, the backs go to the one that's good, that is coming. And uh, those defensive uh, linebackers, uh, <laughs> defensive coordinators, they come up with a lot of sneaky ways to. It's like a cat and mouse game. Yep. The backs a lot of times will check the linebackers and release, and then the linebackers will wait till the back checks and releases, and then they'll delay blitz. Here's one of those schemers, defensive coordinator yeah. Mickey Andrews. Yeah. Time out taken by Florida State. They have one remaining now, with just under three minutes left in the ball game. Our FedEx Express air stats. Neither team tearing it up in the air. Georgia just been so consistent and they had two big plays. One a pass play for a touchdown, one an interception return for a touchdown. So they haven't needed that much yardage. Those are the passing numbers. 37 of it was DJ Shockley's touchdown to Terrence Edwards. And then rushing though, Musa Smith has just kind of controlled the second half especially. And while Florida State's done a good job despite the fact they don't have the guy they'd love to have back there in their backfield and Greg Jones between Maddox and Washington they've been pretty respectable with their 131 FedEx ground yards. Houston Smith though 102 yards in the second half. He's been impressive. Yeah. Uh, and he'll be back. He's another one of those guys that uh, Georgia will have back. Uh, David Green will be back. Uh, Johnson the wide receiver. Gibson the wide receiver. Uh, Damian Gary will be back. Uh, Watson, the tight end, will be back. All the skill players, right. a lot of the skill players are back, and they lose, they lose their starting offensive line, but they like some of the guys they got behind them. Kevin Breedlove has started more games than anybody in Georgia history. John Stinchcomb, one game behind him as a starter. Those big fellas up front, Stinchcomb is going to join his brother Matt in the National Football League and have to put a career in medicine on hold. He's a microbiology major and uh, an academic All-American. So some of those guys are going to the next level and play some pro football. Georgia I mean uh, Florida State rather spent some talk about some of their guys. Uh, they're more than normally going to have all their guys still around. Michael Bulwer's made some talk about wanting to switch mm -hmm. to safety next year. Well, his, you know he's six three and about two twenty. He's more of a line, uh, safety size and a linebacker. Yeah. And his brother Peter of course has given him some good advice. That's good to have a big brother. Peter's uh, all pro with the Baltimore Ravens in the uh -huh. NFL. 2 20 remaining in the ball game. Georgia using every second it can and then tossing it to its big back Smith. And he's brought down in the open field by Brian McFadden. He got six more though and that'll work it down under a couple minutes. Sunday February 2nd from Dick Wolf the creator of Law and Order Ed O'Neill and Ethan Embry the badge is back Dragnet Sunday February 2nd on ABC just the facts ma'am just the facts just the facts my name's Friday I carry a badge I'm a cop and Musa Smith coming off limping just a little bit I think it's from a lot of work on uh, the AstroTurf here at the Superdome more than anything else. He's had a brilliant game. He's a guy that's uh, very quiet. His teammates talk about how quiet he is, and there was an article this year in ESPN, the magazine, about the fact that his father is incarcerated, and it uh, really affected him rather heavily because uh, he's a very private person, and uh, that was never brought out to the public eye until the magazine article, and uh, he wanted to kind of go into hiding for a while, but he said well it'll just make me tougher I guess and uh, he was tough enough to rush for a thousand yards this season and uh, rush for a hundred yards plus in a very very strong Sugar Bowl performance tonight. Want to thank some of the folks that helped bring you the ball games all year. As Ugga barks on Clint Dean's our spotter Pat McGrath our statistician Joe Caracone's our technical manager our production managers Mike Heskett Andre Dawson our computer operator. Hey Schumacher our graphics coordinator computer statisticians Anthony Holman assistance to the producer Ross Malloy and touchdown Tommy Hall Steve Fettig's our associate director our associate producers Eric Posman 
Randy Hargrove's our technical director. Our games directed all year by Steve Byme and produced by Bruce Clark. The punt upcoming. Great job, everybody. Great job. And uh, here's the one hopper fielded by Leon Washington. And Washington still on his feet on the punt return, and he got down to about the 37 yard line. Our coordinating producer is Bob Goodrich. Senior producer of ABC Sports is Bob Toms. And the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. And we have had a great uh, crew and uh, all our camera guys, everybody. Even we had to spend time with Kyle right here in the booth with us today. That's been tough on us. Yeah. You know? He's usually out in the weather somewhere yeah. uh, getting cold. We try to hang him in a basket out on the 50 sometimes, but he's in the booth with us here at the Superdome. But uh, our team is uh, like a family, and we've seen everything from twins born to Steve Baum, our director, to uh, new engagements. And uh, it's been a blast, guys. Everybody being together again this year. Enjoyed it. Bolden, play action, running for his life. Anquan finally just throws it, got out of the pocket, and snapped that thing down. So I'm, I'm going to live to play another day. That's yeah, smart. Yeah. yeah. I'm not taking many snaps. That's Daryl Dickey, the, the quarterback coach, giving him the next play. Anquan really wants to be a wide receiver. I, as mentioned earlier, he came to Florida State. Other teams wanted him to be a wide receiver, and he wanted to be a wanted to be a quarterback. But uh, he, then he changed that very quickly. And I, I bet he'd be happy to be back at wide receiver yeah, next spring. Won't that's it? that's the best position for him. But he's all right with doing this for, for one game as a fill-in. Here comes a delayed blitz, and almost threw an interception there. And Tim Jennings thought he had one. Well, the Bulldog faithful, they'll, I guess, uh, hang around at least another day before the parties begin in Athens. As they're not only going to be the SEC champions, they'll be the Nokia Sugar Bowl champions, too. And from the days of Vince Dooley, when it seemed like, uh, talked to Coach Dooley the other day, I said, Vince, I remember 80 when you won the national title, and you had three Sugar Bowls in a row. And he said, well, Brad, he said, it's been a long, dry spell, and now, again, we're hungry dogs. <laughs> He said everybody got sick of going to New Orleans. Well, they wanted to come back to New Orleans. <laughs> and they have. And they're going to be successful, it appears, with 147 left. Pollock's offside, unless they don't throw a flag. And there's a jump ball by Anquan Bolden. It's out of bounds anyway. It appeared Georgia was offside, unless they were drawn off. And. Offsides on the defense will be five yard penalty. Still third down. It was on David Pollock. It'll take a miracle for Florida State to win this game. And speaking of that, Skeet Ulrich investigates bizarre events no one can explain. Compelling new drama miracle happening Monday, January 27th on ABC. So it's down to third down and a long five. At the 32 yard line Sam and Gardner go out to the right side and Morgan to the left if Anquan Bolden can find time to hook up with one of those three. Obviously two down territory. Bolden throws on the run completes it and spinning away and down the sideline Nick Maddox. I don't know how Nick got out of that would be tackle that would have been about a two yard gain instead he spins for 13 and he gets out of bounds. He is a good receiver. In fact, has played wide receiver some. He just can't block uh, number uh, Davis, number ten. But the broken tackle here, another one there. Get down to a first down inside the twenty. Ninety seconds left, trailing 26-13. Florida State need a quick touchdown. And they know it from the 19. They're in the red zone at least. Bolden flares it out. Maddox got one on one out there and a nice job of holding on to Corey Bryant. Dropped him Maddox. for a loss. This is the area of the field. You don't have a lot of room to work with. And this is where uh, an experienced quarterback has trouble fitting the ball in when you're dropping seven, eight guys back, let alone yeah. a guy that's been playing wide receiver all year. So you got to be careful. Remember, Florida State's out of timeouts. Clock is winding down to a minute. Bolden from the gun. Try to find a handle on the ball and now trying to imitate Michael Vick and it ain't going to work. And Pollock got him. 
Davis was there to help. Pollock is the uh, player of the year in the Southeastern Conference, led the conference in sacks and tackles for losses. First time a defensive player has won player of the year overall in the SEC since Tracy Rocker at Auburn in the late 80s. And he's just a sophomore, a true sophomore. 28 yards to pick up a first down now on third. Holden, time running out on Florida State. Going deep. He's got a man out there. Broken up. It was Gardner again, but nice close by Tim Jennings, who closed the gap and broke it up. Well, if you're Florida State, that's all you can ask for is just a single one-on-one -on -one in the end zone. You Jennings, see that Gardner Jennings does tried a nice, to time it. Jennings is only 5'8". If Gardner could have gotten up early and got over Jennings, he could have maybe caught the football. So one play left for Florida State. Only 16 seconds left, too. And already the fans are chanting for Georgia. The players are gathering around Mark Rick. They know it. It's inevitable now, regardless probably the outcome of this play. Bolden on fourth and 28. Going to the end zone again. And this one is intercepted by Sean Jones. And here comes a cold night for Mark Richt here in a minute. Well, they got him. They got him. <laughs> right on that brand new haircut. Uh, and then he said, get off the field. <laughs> yeah. The beginning of the season, he told his kids, you know what? We're going to start a new wall with all the pictures of SEC champions way back to 1942 and all the championships since. He said, I want everybody to get full pads. We're going to get a picture because when we win the SEC championship and go on and win the Sugar Bowl, we're putting that picture up against all the other ones. We're wearing the silver britches. Wearing the silver britches. And now they know they can put on silver hats because they're going to be the Nokia Sugar Bowl champions. They're one snap away. And no Georgia team has ever won 13 games in a single season, but now they have. Our congratulations to Mark Rick and the Bulldogs. They are the champions of the 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl. The mentor, the pupil, and the young gun got the old man tonight. Bobby Biden says, I think of him as a son. Mark Rick said, no one other than my father has had a bigger impact on my life than Coach Bowden. But tonight, the student gets the master. Let's check in with Swanee. Thank you, Brad. Mark, congratulations. I know emotionally and for the history of Georgia, this has to have been a tremendous win for you. It was big. It was big. I'm proud of everybody. I'm thankful for the victory. Um, I'm just uh, I'm thankful to Bobby Bowden still. He's still the teacher, and uh, I love him dearly, but uh, I love Georgia, and I'm real proud of these guys. Well, you're a very humble man, but this turnaround for this Georgia football team, everyone has told me it's the little things you've done for this football team. How, how, why is it they've responded to you so well? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. These, these guys are great ball players. I, I brought in a great staff. I mean, these guys are coaching their rear ends off, and the players are responding. Well, Coach, congratulations. We know that uh, it's just the beginning for you. We look to see you at a lot more bowl games down the road. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Brad? So they are the SEC champs, the Nokia Sugar Bowl champs. He's embraced Athens, and Athens has embraced him. Mark Rick wins the Nokia Sugar Bowl 26-13. We'll be right back. With its new available Power Stroke diesel and five-speed automatic torque shift transmission. There's the scoreboard, 26-13, the final. Georgia a winner for the 13th time in 14 games this year. As we head down to Lynn Swan with our player of the game. Swanee. Thank you very much. I'm with Musa Smith. Musa, coming into this ball game, the story on Florida State was that they had difficulty stopping the run. Did you feel like you had to come to this ball game and control it? 
First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to all my people in Pennsylvania, and I'd like to thank God foremost. But, um, yeah, we knew um, we could run against them, and we knew we could pound the ball, and that's why we came out. I mean, we didn't um, run it in the second quarter, but we went in halftime, and Coach Rick was like, that's my ball. And we came out, and we started pounding the ball down their throat. Was that the challenge in the second half? Because in the first half, Florida State controlled the clock. They looked like they were in position to make things happen. Yeah, they gave us a run for our money in the beginning, and, like, I only had, like, one big run, and, like, all the run, other runs, they were stopping. But And then Coach Rick went to the passing game, and then at halftime, he came, uh, he said he's going to run it the third quarter and fourth quarter. You know, your coach is a very shy and humble man. We asked him what was his impact on this team. What do you think was the greatest thing he offered to you and this team? The greatest thing he did, he, he brought us the blueprint of working hard. And you know what I'm saying? We just went to work at it. All of us came together as a team. And a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication towards a lot of blood, blood sweat, and tears. You feel a great deal of pride in the fact that you've kind of polished off that Georgia image and that history and put them back on the pedestal? Most definitely. I, I'm just looking to great things next year. Congratulations to you. Thank Brett. you. Well, at the beginning of the season, the motto was finish the drill. And then Mark Rick said, Let's do something special. And Musa Smith and company did something special tonight. Our built Ford Tough play of the game. Fabian Walker is first start at quarterback for Florida State. An ill advised pass intercepted and taken the distance by Bruce Thornton. 71 yards for a touchdown. It really set the tone, especially defensively, for this Georgia team in this game tonight. So many big moments for Georgia. The big interception against South Carolina that won a game. They beat Alabama for the first time. They had a big fourth down play against Kentucky. They beat Auburn in the waning seconds. They beat Arkansas silly in the SEC championship. And now tonight they beat Florida State in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Our final score, Georgia 26, Florida State 13. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Don't forget Thursday night, the FedEx Orange Bowl. USC will take on Iowa. And Friday, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Number one, Miami. Number two, Ohio State for all the chips for the national championship. 26-13 is our final score for my partners, Lynn Swan and Bob Greasy. I'm Brad Nessler from the Superdome in New Orleans. Congratulations. The 69th Nokia Sugar Bowl champs are the Georgia Bulldogs.